valleys along the way. Each stride is fraught with unsteady ground. Every turn of the corner reveals a new challenge. A little closer to the summit, the 2016 Arizona Cardinals are poised to take that final step. They have the talent and tools to reach the apex, but also the weight of unprecedented expectations in tow. Will they possess the single-minded focus to reach new heights? The Cardinals begin their ascent tonight. Welcome to the most anticipated season in Arizona Cardinals history. Following a 13-win campaign and a trip to the NFC title game, expectations are at an all-time high in 2016. The climb to the top of the NFL mountain begins tonight in the preseason opener here at University of Phoenix Stadium as the Cardinals take on the Oakland Raiders. And hi, everybody. Alongside Ron Wolfley, I'm Dave Pash. This is your 15 for me. Wolf, you've been here longer if you include your years as a player. Never have we seen this type of palpable buzz surrounding the club, especially nationally. And that's first and foremost because of the offense, the most exciting offense in the NFL in 2015. And everybody's back. So how do they top? what they did last year. Boy, David, as soon as I hear you say that, the first thing I think of is protection. You've got to be able to protect Carson Palmer. It does you no good to have guys that are weapons like David Johnson and J.J. Nelson and John Brown and Larry Fitzgerald and Michael Floyd if you can't protect Carson Palmer. It takes a team to protect Carson Palmer. And if, in fact, they do that, David, I'm here to tell you right now, they're going to blow up the numbers they did last year and make them look pale in comparison. They were number one in the NFL last year in total offense some think the defense could be uh, possibly the, the top defense in the NFL this year because of not only Tyron Matthew coming back from injury and Patrick Peterson a Pro Bowl corner but also uh, Chandler Jones who the Cardinals traded for in the offseason the one piece the Cardinals absolutely had to have that's an elite pass rusher and Jones has that no doubt David and you know what James Betcher has a philosophy and we've seen that philosophy bring five or more play press man cover and go after the quarterback I think Chandler Jones is going to threaten that philosophy of James Petra. At some point in time, David, you need to be able to rush four, drop seven, and still get pressure on the quarterback. When you play against elite quarterbacks, you better be able to do that, and that's why Chandler Jones is going to be a huge plus for the Cardinals in 2016. Of course, though, Wolf, there are still some question marks surrounding a few spots for the Arizona Cardinals, and... We've been getting some answers during training camp. We'll find out more tonight as the Cardinals open the preseason against the Oakland Raiders next. Arizona Cardinals preseason football is brought to you by University of Phoenix, the official education partner of the Cardinals. By Desert Schools, we're here for you. By Dignity Health, hello, human kindness. And by Hyundai, proud partner of the Cardinals. Back here at the University of Phoenix Stadium, we are moments away from kickoff as the Cardinals and Raiders square off in the preseason opener. Bruce Arians in his fourth season. As the Arizona Cardinals head coach, 35-15 and 15 record, including 1-2 and two in the playoffs. And that victory, of course, came here last year when that guy went into the end zone when Carson Palmer found him on a shovel pass to beat the Packers in overtime in one of the great playoff games we've ever seen. Let's check in now with a third member of our crew down on the field. Here's Jody Jackson. All right, guys, just a year ago, third-round pick Brandon Williams was just making a switch from running back to cornerback at Texas A&M. Now, it looks like he's slated to be the starting quarterback for this Cardinals team. When I asked Brandon earlier this week, what was his thought when he was drafted by the Cards? He said, my first thought was I get to play with the best quarterback in the league. And when you see Patrick Peterson here at camp, you find Brandon Williams.
Williams not far behind. They have studied tape together. He said Patrick has really helped him as a technician and studying that film each and every day where Tyron Matthew is helping him a lot with the mental side of the game. If he gets beat, he keeps his head up and keeps going. This young man has been a sponge. Larry Fitzgerald says he's infatuated with football. He loves this kid. So Jody Brandon Williams is a follower. He's also a leader. When he made that switch last year to corner, he was named captain of the defense at Texas A&M, which tells you something about his character. He's 23 years old. And as Wolf said during the pregame, it's his job to lose. We'll see a lot of him tonight. We'll see a lot of D.J. Humphreys. But other than that, the starters will go about a quarter in this first preseason game. Well, Brandon Williams, David, as you said already, I mean, this is a guy that has been the talk of training camp. Has he not? I mean, everybody, of course, looking at D.J. Humphreys and how D.J. Humphreys may do at right tackle, of course. But Brandon Williams has been the talk of training camp. From day one, he stood out. Wolf, I've never seen this before. Sometimes in preseason, there, there are firsts. The players lined up on the wrong side of the field. You ever seen that? Uh, they lined up to kick off, and then they realized they had to switch sides. I have not, David. I can't say that I have seen that right there. Um, I'm sure it has happened in the game before. Yeah, when? <laughs> well, you and I have been doing this for two decades. <laughs> so go DeAndre, back and look at it. DeAndre Washington is the deep man for the Raiders. He's a rookie out of Texas Tech that uh, the Raider coaches are really excited to see. Chandler Catanzaro will kick it off. Year 11 of the University of Phoenix Stadium, and we are underway in the preseason opener. Most kickoff returns will come out of the end zone tonight in preseason as Washington has passed the 25-yard line and out to the 26. Now a new rule this year in the National Football League as on all touchbacks, it will come out to the 25 anyway. There's Derek Carr, who a couple years ago when he was in his final season at Fresno State, the rumor was that the Cardinals were going to draft him. That was never in their plans. He went to the Raiders in the second round, and boy, he's been terrific so far. Boy, he really has, man. I expect a big year, and so do the Raiders out of Derek Carr. Latavius Murray is the running back, rushed for over 1,000 yards last year. And Amari Cooper at the bottom of your screen, he had over 1,000 receiving yards. Carr went to the Pro Bowl last year. Floats it to the sideline. It's caught by former 49er Michael Crabtree. He was covered by Brandon Williams. Let's take a look, Wolf, at your players to watch on the Oakland offense. I think you just saw Michael Crabtree right there running an out route, and the education happens quickly for Brandon Williams. Latavius Murray, of course, and Amari Cooper. How dangerous is Amari Cooper? He went to the Pro Bowl as well as a rookie out of Alabama in 2015. There is some movement on the offensive line by the Raiders, so a penalty flag down. This will be a false start on the road team. Kalichi Osamele, a free agent from the Ravens. Offense, number 70, five-yard penalty, first down. You love saying that, don't I you, do. David? Kalichi yeah. Osamele. You know, the Raiders have a good offensive line. Donald Penn is the veteran up there. He's an 11-year pro, but you've got Osamele, you've got Rodney Hudson. Gabe Jackson, third year at a Mississippi State. The right tackle spot, Menelik Watson holds it down for now, but there is some competition to that position for Oakland. One guy you won't see on the defensive front for the Cardinals tonight, Robert Kendici, the first-round pick. He has not practiced in camp yet due to an ankle injury. Here's Murray on first and 15, and he gets walloped by Ed Stinson. And then Dale Buchanan gets into it with Lee Smith. Boy, you love to see that out of Dayon Buchanan. That's just the way that he plays right now. A very aggressive, very physical football player down in the box. I mean, this guy does not, not a whole lot of Dayon Buchanan, the guy walking around the street once he gets on that field. He is a give it everything he's got, lay it on the line brother, and a downhill brother at that. Led the team in tackles last year playing linebacker. Remember, he was drafted as a safety. Forced to play inside backer, though, as the play clock is at one, and it's delay a game. So two penalties already on the Raiders' offense. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. 
Greg Rolstad, the referee, let's take a look at some key players on the Cardinals defense. Well, right here, you got Brandon Williams. We were talking about Brandon, the first play of the game. That education happened quickly. Then Marcus Golden, what a great training camp he's having. Chandler Jones, his value is obvious. Tyvon Branch, that newcomer. Versatility is a buzzword. Murray getting a call across the 40-yard line into the 42, a six-yard run. Tony Jefferson on the stop. And Tyvon Branch is not starting. D.J. Swearinger is manning that spot, but Branch will see him in nickel. He's a former Raider and was with the Chiefs most recently. And, of course, another guy we don't see in the back end is Tyron Matthew. It's possible Matthew could practice next week after suffering the ACL injury against the Eagles towards the end of last season. I know you and I just hope he's healthy for New England week one. Third and long. As Carr, uh, Carr lobs it to Cooper, pulls it in, but he was out of bounds, incomplete. Calais Campbell was in the backfield, got pressure on Carr, and the pass was just off target. Right, right here, you can see it. he's got great protection on a four-man rush, and over the top, Brandon Williams getting beat on a double move by Amari Cooper. Boy, this is this is exactly what's got to happen here, David. I'm glad Brandon Williams is learning this kind of lesson. We have not seen him get beat like that in training camp at all. But now, all of a sudden, going against the competition, he's seeing different looks. Better it happened now than week one. That's another reason why the Cardinal coach has wanted to play a lot in the preseason. He saw J.J. Nelson, the deep man, Marquette King, excellent punter, hammers this one, but kicked it too far. A 59-yard punt, but only a 39-yard net. Cardinals will have it for the first time on offense when we come back. No score early on here in Glendale. The Cardinals' first team offense on the field. Early on here at University of Phoenix Stadium, that means Carson Palmer back at quarterback for his fourth season as a Cardinal. Had a terrific 2015. Set a franchise record throwing for over 4,600 yards. He was second in the NFL in touchdown passes with 35. And third in the league in passer rating. Stayed healthy as well last year after a knee injury two seasons ago. Here's David Johnson going nowhere on first down. Gets leveled by Malcolm Smith. Take a look at your players to watch on the Cardinals offense. Well, I guarantee you, David Johnson is one of those guys you got to look at right there. Uh, David Johnson may be the most explosive combination of power to speed. D.J. Humphreys, of course, at right tackle. And A.Q. Shipley starting at center. The offensive line, a question mark for the Cardinals. Humphreys inactive all of last year. Shipley started three games. Second down and ten. No gain for Johnson on first. Palmer gets drilled, and he almost throws an interception. Sean Smith dropped it. Ben Heaney hit Palmer. Well, there it is right there, David. That's exactly what we were talking about at the very top. Protection and being able to protect Carson Palmer. The fact that it takes a team. The offensive line has got to do its job. The wide receivers have to run the right routes. There was a penalty marker down on the field. It's against Arizona. The running backs have got to pick up blitzers like Heaney right there. The quarterback has got to know when to dump it, help himself out. Illegal hands, hands to the face. Offense, number 53. That penalty's declined. The result of the play is third down. That's on Shipley. He is undersized at the center position. You see there, he, he got the cage of Justin Ellis. And here's Heaney coming free up the middle to get the shot on Palmer. You can see that is a hot protection, a five-man protection, something that B.A. loves to, to utilize right there. Carson did a good job getting rid of it. Penalty declined, so third and ten. Palmer over the middle, caught right at the first down marker by J.J. Nelson. 
Nelson caught 11 passes last year, and that is good enough for a first down. Look at Skeletor right here, weighing 149 pounds. All right, that's an exaggeration. Working against the zone with Larry Fitzgerald, right? Just setting it down. Nice job sitting it down right there. To see that, David, recognize the zone cover. Didn't break out. Just sat it right down. Good read by Carson. Remember when he came in last year? Everybody was enamored with his speed for good reason, but he has excellent hands as well. Fresh set of downs on the 31. Here's Johnson trying to find a hole, and he's up near the 38-yard line. Slammed down by Jihad Ward. Gain of close to six or seven there for Johnson. Look at the Raiders players to watch on defense. Boy, what a great job of actually biding his time right there from David Johnson. You can see Khalil Mack. Never seen anyone move like him since Lawrence Taylor. Not saying he's LT, just saying I've never seen anyone move on the football field like Khalil Mack. Bruce Irvin, of course, and then Big Dan Williams, Dumpster Dan. Former first-round pick of the Cardinals. It was a gain of eight for Johnson, second and two. Play action for Palmer. And Carson going deep to Fitz. Check that Michael Floyd on the catch down to the 31. Floyd wide open. And Palmer put him on him. Good protection as well. Oh, here it is. This is a B.A. staple right here. All about protection for Carson Palmer. You can see it right here, right? A six-man protection. David Johnson doing a good job picking up. And then you've got the deep end to dig to Michael Floyd. That is B.A. in a nutshell. Floyd was so good in the playoffs last year at two touchdowns in the postseason last year. Going into a contract season. Here's Johnson. Breaks the tackle. Has the first down. Johnson to the 10-yard line. And out of bounds at the 8th. The 23-yard run for the second-year man from Northern Iowa. Well, this right here, David, this is exactly how the Arizona Cardinals love to run the football right here. Little 12 personnel. Look at the movement at the point of attack. The 22 double, and then David Johnson bouncing that to the outside, using his speed. See, this is what makes him so dangerous at 229 pounds to be able to put a little juke on, a little jig, and get the corner. Now Chris Johnson is in and running back. He missed the end of last season due to a knee injury. Johnson to the four-yard line. At the time of the injury, he was among the NFL leaders. 814 rushing yards in 11 games. Had the Cardinals made the Super Bowl, he could have returned. Glad to have him back here to spell David Johnson here in 2016. Oh, you can actually see right there, CJ running the tackle zone, right? You better create a seam play side because it's it's not as easy getting that backside sealed anymore with the emphasis on the chop block on the backside. You have to be able to get that front side sealed and then build the wall backside. Cardinals are now in the CDW red zone. Second down. Palmer off play action hits Larry. Fitz spun down for a loss back at the eight yard line. Fells is out there trying to block, but just too many Raiders. Sean Smith there first. So a third down and goal from about the seven yard line. Yeah, not crazy about that little play action coming off the tackle zone, right? The scratch play to the right. Throw it back, a little wide receiver screen to Larry Fitzgerald. Cardinals were terrific in the red zone last year. 38 touchdowns. Third and goal on the seven. Chris Johnson stays in the game. No John Brown tonight, a wide receiver out due to injury. Palmer with time and throws it away. Everybody covered and another shot taken by Palmer. Jihad Ward got him this time. And the Cardinals will have to settle for a Chandler Cat Zero field goal truck. You go ahead and you look at protection right here, right? You got DJ Humphreys working on the outside. And Khalil Mack beat him cleanly inside with that inside move. Every great edge rusher that has played in the NFL has a great change up to the edge. He's got the inside, the counter to the edge rush, and you saw it right there out of Khalil. Good thing AQ Shipley was coming along. And Catanzaro puts it through as the Cardinals get three points and have the lead midway through the first quarter.
Cardinals got inside the 10 yard line but had to settle for a field goal. The Cardinals scoring drive presented by Santan Ford. Santan Ford and the Arizona Cardinals team is what it takes. 10 play 73 yard drive. Cat Zero with a 25 yard field goal. And that'll do it for Carson Palmer. We'll see if other members of the starting offense for the Cardinals are done. Imagine DJ Humphreys will play about a half. Palmer three of five passing, including that strike to Michael Floyd for a big play on that drive. Yeah, DJ Humphreys, Brandon Williams, those guys got to get reps. Johnny Holton is deep trying to make this Raider roster and wide receiver and kick returner. And he's got some running room. Ken Zero chases him out of bounds at the 35 yard line. So a mistake by the special teams. The Raiders will have decent starting field position when we come back. Cardinals on top of the Raiders, 3-0 as we walk you back to our Ford broadcast booth brought to you by your Arizona Ford dealers. Dave Pash, Ron Wolfley, year 12 for the two of us together on the Cardinals broadcast. 2015 was fun, 2016 hopefully will end and a championship the Cardinals lost in the NFC title game in Carolina last year won the NFC West for the third time beat the Packers here in the divisional round I hope that home field in 2016 to play both playoff games at home before the Super Bowl Carr targeting Williams again as Amari Cooper couldn't hang on to it it's incomplete but that's the third time that Derek Carr has thrown at Brandon Williams no, it's like some of the DB coaches will tell you it doesn't take scientists to figure out where to throw the football when you've got Patrick Peterson on one corner and you've got a rookie on another corner or anybody else for that matter on the Cardinals roster. Yeah, testing Brandon Williams right now. It's good for the young man. Meanwhile, Lamari Cooper with a drop and you go back to that last possession. Surprised he couldn't get that second foot down for a completion. So second and ten, here's Cooper in the flat. Makes one defender miss. Knocked out at the 41. That's a six-yard gain for Amari Cooper. Marquis Christian is out there right now. A rookie from Midwestern State. Drafted in the fifth round. The Cardinals coach has a really high on this young guy as the second team defense is on the field for Arizona. You know, some guys walk around with a pencil and other guys walk around with a sledgehammer. Marquis Christian, the one thing he'll do, he'll put that sledgehammer on you. Cardinals have had a great track record of mid to late round draft picks from small schools. We're hoping Christian's another one that has success. Third and four for Carr. As Carr throws it for Crabtree and it was on the money but juggled. Ruled the catch though at the 37 yard line. Veteran Allen ball in coverage. That was a great throw by Carr. You want to talk about dropping a P into a thimble. That was Derek Carr right there. What a throw on the fade. Right over the shoulder. Working against Allen Ball. Didn't have bad coverage right there, but a great throw. Beats great coverage every time. Bruce Arians claiming it was juggled, and that's why he threw the challenge flag. You knew B.A. was going to throw that flag. Does he have it? Looks like he's got it to me. Question is that second foot on the chalk or inbounds? Kind of hard to see from that angle right there, wouldn't it? The conclusive video evidence to overturn the ruling on the field. Well, you knew B.A. was going to throw that flag. Yeah. <laughs> It's burning a hole in his pocket. <laughs> Back in a moment. Find out if that was a catch. Craig Rolstad, tonight's referee, with the ruling. The ruling on the field stands as called. It is a completed pass. When we push down, Oakland, Arizona will charge with his first time out. But not enough video evidence to overturn the ruling of the field. Crabtree had an excellent season in 2015. Nine touchdowns, 85 catches. Yeah, I, I think he's out there. Uh, that look right showed now, us the, the right foot was moving. on the chalk. Ball though. is moving. But the right foot's on the chalk anyway. 
Boy, I'll tell you, yeah, sometimes you just got to figure out what it is that they're saying and go with it or you'll lose your mind. Hey, Wolf, you see the guy next to Michael Crabtree with a cap? That's Rob Moore. That former, is Rob Moore. He's the wide receivers coach, former Cardinals wide receiver, was a member of the Cardinals broadcast team at one point. Had to get away from us, so got into coaching. Surprised you haven't done that yet. Stay tuned. So first down for the 37, here's Murray. And he gets wrestled to the ground after a gain of one. Chris Clemens in there. Meanwhile, Tyvon Branch lost his helmet, took a shot to the head. He'll come to the Cardinal sideline. Well, you see this all the time. You're running the tackle zone. It's a zone blocking scheme, but you got a fullback. You see the fullback right there. Really don't like that play. It drives me crazy because it's so difficult on the fullback to actually pick his way through and find somebody to hit. You see Tyvon Branch coming in there, blood farming with that helmet. Try to put it right on the ball, but it may have tweaked him. Second down and eight. Carr moves to his right and throws it deep. Incomplete trying to hit Marcel Reese. Good coverage by the Cardinals that time. Marquis Christian. Reese, pretty good receiver out of the backfield as a fullback. Third down. A five-man rush by the Arizona Cardinals. Once again, nobody breaks five more than the Cardinals in the National Football League. You see Marquis Christian working right there, doing a nice job. We talked about the depth at safety with Swearinger, Jefferson, Matthew, Branch, Marquis Christian. Very solid position for the Cardinals in 2016. Third down and eight with a play clock down to two. Carr for Cooper overthrowing. Cooper had a little bit of separation from Brandon Williams, but the pass was out of bounds. Well, that is a James Betcher special right there. Go ahead and line up, mugging the A-gaps. Two players standing up on either shoulder of the center. You bring six. That is a blitz, David, by anybody's estimation. Six or more, a blitz playing man free behind him. Man across the board, free safety in the middle of the field. All right, a 53-yard field goal try for 38-year-old Sebastian Janikowski. And he absolutely crushes it right between the uprights. This guy's incredible. I don't know if Roberto Aguayo will be worth the second-round pick, but this guy certainly was worth the first-round pick back in 2000. Looks like he ate a pack of sausages and then goes out there and drills it right through the uprights. Doesn't get much better than that. The Cardinals second team offense, including rookie center Evan Bain, fourth round draft choice out of Missouri, getting ready to take the field. Meanwhile, Janikowski didn't even break a sweat on that 53 yarder. Will now kick off to Andre Ellington. The Wolf has kind of been the forgotten guy. This player two years ago was going to be the central focus of the offense. He got hurt, but he's healthy now. Short kickoff, field at the seven-yard line. And out past the 20 is Kerwin Williams. David, you're going to see a lot more of that as well. That is that pop-up moon kick, because if you kick it out of the end zone now, of course, it's coming out to the 25. That's a new touchback rule you're going to see a lot more teams do what the Raiders just did right there. We'll talk more about that later. Drew Stanton in the game, 10-year pro, re-signed with the Cardinals, was a free agent. How many backups have a winning record? But uh, Stanton, two years ago when Carson Palmer went out with a knee injury before Stanton was injured, did a fine job for Arizona. First down on the 22-yard line. Here's Chris Johnson trying to cut it back and brought down for no gain of the play. This is the problem with this play right here. It's 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends. You line up and you run the tackle zone. Got a player down on the field here, David. Looks like a Raider. But when you run that play, you got to get a hat on a hat play side. And you really better hope that you find a seam play side when you run that tackle zone because it's so much harder to get that chop block or build that wall on the backside. And that that play, you need both those options. You need a seam maybe 
play side, hat on a hat, and then you need to build that speed bumper, that wall, on the back side. That's Mario Edwards, the injured Raider. Wolf, it's such an important subject because you know, we talked about the touchback rule, but the fact now that there are no more chop blocks. Yes. Where at any point, one offensive player is engaged high with a defender and the other guy comes in low or vice versa. You can't do that anywhere on the field. So when you talk about the Cardinals offense in the run game, the cutback run, how do you think that'll impact the Cards? I think it's going to impact it in a big way. Bruce Arians worried about that very thing, that it's going to be a point of emphasis with the officials and that there's not going to be a lot of consistency as to how you make the call right there. And again, that play, David, it's designed to have both options. Hat on a hat play side, build that wall backside, give the running back that cutback option. Now all of a sudden you just saw it right there. You can't get the backside cut off. You better hope you got that play side seam. It's kind of like Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. You got to have them both. Mario Edwards helped off the field. Second and ten. Here's Chris Johnson again. And Johnson gets about five to the 27-yard line. Calling the plays tonight and throughout the preseason, offensive coordinator Harold Goodwin. Now, even though he's the OC, normally doesn't call the plays. That belongs to Bruce Arians, but Goody last year called plays during some of the preseason games, but he is calling the plays now throughout the preseason. B.A. giving him a shot to get comfortable doing that so that perhaps he'll get a head coaching opportunity at some point. He wants that coaching tree. He wants that legacy. Stanton takes in the high snap on third down, and the pass incomplete intended for Jermaine Gresham. So the Cardinals have to punt. Now the Raiders bring in a little bit of pressure right there, a decent pocket, solid pocket for Drew Stanton, getting rid of that ball and trying to hit Gresham on the outs. Drew Butler to punt for the Cardinals among the league leaders and punts inside the 20. Short punt here by Butler. Washington decides to pounce on it at the 22 yard line with Tony Jefferson bearing down on him. You saw that snap maybe a little bit low. That's something to keep an eye on. A new long snapper this year for the Cardinals. It's going to be one of two guys, either Daniel Dillon or Cameron Canada. They're both rookies. Remember Mike Leach was here for a long time, played in the NFL as a long snapper for two decades. So it's a very important position. Arians told us the other day he's not going to use one of the, the normal guys on the roster. One of those two guys is getting the job. Yeah, that is Cameron right there that you're looking at. You go ahead, and man, that's got to feel good, right? You got in there, and you didn't gun it over his head. Got in there, got a little juice, a little grease. Did your job. Matt McGloin in a quarterback for the Raiders, and a run play. Murray with a big hole. Gets the first down to the 35. It's a 12-yard gain. Tyvon Branch is back out there, makes the tackle. Mentioned Matt McGloin, a quarterback. The importance of having a coach in college who really knows the quarterback position. Matt McGloin, Wolf, a couple years ago, yeah. couldn't play. And then Penn State hires Bill O'Brien as the head coach. He turns McGloin into a pro. Go figure. Bill O'Brien, you got that right. Fourth year now in the league. Most thought he wouldn't play a single game, and he's the number two quarterback for the Raiders, although they did draft Connor Cook out of Michigan State this year. Another big hole. This is Jamez Olawali. He's out near the 40-yard line. Brought down by Branch. All right, now the Raiders are starting to grease it up inside the box. Running the inside zone. They're running a couple of times right now out of different personnel groups. That time they ran it to the right. Nice little cut back there. Tybon Branch. There's a guy that also has had a very good training, training camp for the Cardinals. Guy that they like. Versatility is what you hear when you hear coaches talk about Tybon. Big thing with him, can he stay healthy? Injured for most of 2013 and 2014, but came back to play every game with the Chiefs last year. Olawali again. Pushed back at the line of scrimmage by Kareem Martin. The ball came out, but Olawali was ruled down. Good to see Kareem Martin make a play. He's fighting for a roster spot, former third-round draft choice. 
Back on the Raiders running to counter OF. A power scheme play, if ever there was. Down blocks, play side, try to kick out the end man of the line of scrimmage. And have a large human being running up through the hole leading that play. Cardinals did a good job of stopping it. Inside two minutes to go here in the opening quarter. Third down and five for the Raiders. McGloin with time. And he had a man open. But the pass was off the mark. Johnny Holden was open downfield. Fourth down. Boy, he locked in to his tight end right there, didn't he? I mean, he locked into him heavy. The Cardinals brought five, played man free. Once again, we've seen that a lot from James Betcher. It's a staple. He's going to bring pressure. It's just what they do. But as the season unfolds, I want to see if Chandler Jones has any kind of impact on that. Chandler Jones, 12 and a half sacks last year with the Patriots. The Cardinals traded for him. A lot of Cardinals think he's going to get 20 sacks this year because of guys like Kandichi and Golden helping out. Here's J.J. Nelson on the punt return. And Nelson fumbles the ball, and the Raiders have it inside the 20-yard line. Recovered by Holton as Nelson coughs it up. Well, J.J. Nelson, one of the best the Arizona Cardinals have at catching the football. The Cardinals HR plays all the time, and J.J. Nelson does not drop punts. But fumbling, this is something a little bit different right here. He's got to do a much better job. Look at the way he's carrying that ball. he got to tuck that thing in. Now, it's a good job by the Raiders putting it right on the football. you got to do a better job knowing when you're going into traffic and tucking that thing away. Looked like Corey Toomer forced the fumble. Holton recovers it. And the Raiders are in the red zone. My old coach used to say, don't lead with a football when you're going into traffic. Don't lead with a football. Have that tucked away to your side. Cardinals were ninth in the NFL last year. Fourth, rather, in turnover ratio. But going wide open in the end zone for the touchdown. And no coverage that time as Walford, the tight end, went right down the seam uncovered. Hey, this is a nice job right here by Matt McGloin. Down the seam, right? Reading the coverage. Great pockets on a four-man rush. Middle of the field closed. That's the bang eight. <laughs> and he put it right on him. Oh, yeah, David. The bang eight. Skinny post. That's a nice read by McGloin. So the Raiders capitalize on the Cardinals' turnover. Giorgio Tavecchio is on to try the extra point. And last year they moved the extra point back, so they're about 33 yards, but no problem for Tavecchio. 10-3 Raiders. Now for every successful Cardinals field goal, Signal will make a generous contribution to Cardinals Charities, benefiting the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Well, that's one of those drives you feel really, really good if you're Matt McGloin, right? Walk on over there. Make sure you get right in front of Jack Del Rio's face. Did you see that, Coach? Well, Notice the way that I looked him off. <laughs> you know, they drafted Connor Cook, fourth round out of Michigan State, so... You know, some teams are going to keep two quarterbacks. Matt McGloin has uh, been able to stick around, hoping that if he's not the number two, at least he's on the roster. be really interesting to see if the Cardinals go with two quarterbacks. We'll see a lot of Matt Barkley tonight and throughout the preseason. Really, Jacob Coker isn't in the mix unless he lights it up in preseason games, Wolf. But Barkley has to show something tonight and throughout this preseason. I think it's a fait accompli, David. I really do. I think it's something that's already done. I think the NFL is definitely moving towards that trend where you're only going to keep two quarterbacks on your 53. Ellington running it out for Arizona. And he will not make it to the 15-yard line. He gets smoked by Corey Toomer.
Well, I'll tell you what, that is a flesh bomb going off down there with Corey Tuber. Got sandwich Andre Ellington getting hit by not one, but two guys. And Corey Tuber was the one who really laid the lumber. So the Cardinals backed up to their 12-yard line. Drew Stanton in a quarterback. B.A. told us earlier this week it's unlikely Stanton will play past the first quarter. Snap a little high. Stanton with time. And overthrows Brown. It's intercepted. Nate Allen with the pick. Gets back near the 10-yard line before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back turnovers by the Cardinals. Well, right here, you got a four-man rush. Close the middle of the field. Looked like they were playing a three-deep zone right there. That is a staple of Ken Norton and the Ken Norton defense. You got to remember, came from Seattle, right? Brought Pete Carroll's defense down here. They love to close the middle of the field, whether they're playing cover three, rolling up to the strong side, playing cover six, rolling it up to the weak. They're playing man free, man across the board, and still closing the middle of the field. Bad throw, bad read by Drew Stanton. So first down on the 12-yard line for Oakland. McGloin will hand it off. Ola Wally going nowhere. Trying to keep the feet moving and push the pile. He got to the 10. Alex Okafor on the stop. Now Okafor, Wolf. Yeah, you look at that outside linebacker position. There are a lot of guys fighting for maybe one spot. Okafor is a good player. We've seen him in camp make plays just like he did two years ago when he had eight sacks. I think you're going to keep four outside linebackers, and I think he's going to be one of them. There's Rodney Gunter right there. You want to talk about a strong individual. That boy's strong. Well, you, you have Okafor, of course. You have Kareem Martin, Shaq Riddick, Tristan Opalalugo. We start in the CFL who's trying to win a spot on the roster as well. Here's second and eight. McGloin to the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown. Andre Holmes with the grab. Wow. Boy, that is a great throw by McGloin. Going after Brandon Edwards. Williams. I mean, Brandon Williams. Boy, I'll tell you what. Brandon Williams right now. Doesn't get a good enough jam on that fade. He's got to do a much better job going up, trying to make a play on the football. That is the one thing he's going to learn quickly, is that you've got to look for the ball yourself. you got to go up and try to challenge the ball and take the ball at its highest point. Again, Wolf, here's someone who is about one year removed from changing positions. And now... He's gone from Texas A&M to the NFL and being asked to start a corner on a Super Bowl contender, and the Raiders have attacked him throughout this first quarter. Well, the Raiders, yeah, they're looking out there going, you know what, that kid, that wasn't that kid we were looking at, and you know what, he's a running back at A&M. What do you say we try him a little bit? Tavecchio nails the extra point, and the Raiders capitalize on consecutive turnovers by Arizona. Matt McGloin looking good. And 17-3 uh, Oakland. But look, for Brandon Williams, he'd rather this happen now. You knew at some point he was going to make mistakes. At least the coaches will have plenty of time to work with him on this. And Patrick Peterson, I'm sure, will be talking to him as he has throughout camp as well. He's going to see. Opposite of Patrick Peterson, this is what you're going to see. You're, you're going to get see. thrown at. You're going to get thrown at, David. You better believe it. Bank on it. This is good as well because you know what? Brandon Williams is one of these kids. He's a great kid. He's a competitor. He cares. And he's always following Patrick Peterson around. Honey Badger as well. They're always talking to him. This is good. A big, fat slice of humble pie will make this kid work even harder. Justin Bethel signed a big contract in the offseason. Bethel, of course, a special teams ace, but... With Gerard Powers gone, and he thought Bethel would have the starting cornerback job, but because of a foot injury, it's Brandon Williams' job to lose, and this certainly will be a lesson for Williams. 
Well, you know what? It's almost like being a closer in baseball, David. You've got to have a short memory when you play cornerback in the NFL. And he asked coaches, personnel guys, he does. Uh, basically, no, they say nothing phases him, which is the type of attitude you want out of your corner. You can't get bothered when something bad happens, especially in a preseason game. Here's Ellington on the return. And again, he won't get to the 20-yard line. It was Darren Bates who was there first for Oakland on special teams, and the Cardinals will have to start around their 17-yard line. Yeah, middle return for the Arizona Cardinals once again. This is what we're going to see, David. We're going to see teams say, we believe in our cover teams, so we're going to kick it short instead of giving it to you on the 25-yard line. End of one here at University of Phoenix Stadium. Raiders up by 14. Raiders in front 17-3. Dave Pash, Ron Wolfley, Jody Jackson at University of Phoenix Stadium. Second quarter ready to start 15 minutes before halftime. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com today. Bruce Stanton still in at quarterback. And a nice job breaking a tackle. Lafani Moma, who shined in the preseason last year before a season-ending injury. He gets a first down. Boy, this is a kid I know they really like. Want to see more from Lafani Moma. A guy basically a stick with lips. You can see Fani Moma came out of that bunch set, set it down against that zone cover, did a nice job, put the hand down. You have to think you got Gresham, Fells, and Troy Nicholas, who's really improved, and then a fourth tight end. Who will that be? Moma or Gerald Christian? Stand over the middle in the pass high, nearly intercepted by Allen again. Two overthrows by Stanton. This one intended for J.J. Nelson. Well, this is exactly what Bruce Arians and his offense is all about. Of course, Harold Goodwin calling the plays tonight, trying to hit that deep in that dig route. We saw Carson Palmer do that earlier to Michael Floyd. Well, if I want to go back to the, the tight end conversation, you think the Cardinals keep just three, or is MoMA, Gerald Christian, are they fighting for that, that four spot? Just knowing that 12 personnel is the number one personnel group in rundown situations they keep four so 12 meaning one back two tight end yes here's ellington finding a running lane across the 40 yard line ellington into raider territory finally pushed out of the 38 yard line terrific run by ellington to get into raider territory well you got to look at dj humphreys on this play right here dj humphreys he's lined up as the right tackle watch it Gets a nice block right there. Now all of a sudden you got Andre Ellington off to the races. The guy that runs the daylight probably as well as any back in the league. The 35-yard scamper by Ellington. Fourth-year pro out of Clemson. Ellington again. Not much, maybe a yard. Ellington has battled injury. That's been his biggest obstacle being available. That led to the drafting of David Johnson in the third round and the signing of Chris Johnson. But Ellington is still a weapon. He's the guy that can win a game on one play. We've seen that kind of speed. Saw it in Seattle at a big touchdown last year. I don't think there's any doubt we're going to see Andre Ellington. It's just how much because every time you take David Johnson off the field, you're not as explosive or as good, in my opinion. Play action for Stanton. And Nicholas on the grab bounces off of a defender. And Nicholas inside the 15, inside the five yard line. Great run after the catch by Troy Nicholas. Oh, this is what the Arizona Cardinals have been waiting for from Troy Nicholas. Look at this big guy. Get out of there. Little play action. Dump it off. Get off me. <laughs> Troy Nicholas, now he's tucking it and running down the sideline. He goes, drops another Raider. This is a strong individual. They've been waiting. Second round pick in 2014. They've been waiting to see that kind of aggression out of Nicholas. He caught a couple of touchdowns last year. B.A. told us he might be their best tight end right now. First and goal. Stanton to the end zone. And he overthrows Nicholas that time. Uh, he had him open as well to his left. Good protection Second. for Drew Stanton. You can see the Raiders setting up the picket fence across that end zone. 
Right there, you can see it just go off of Troy Nicholas. He is a big unit. Have you ever stood next to him, yeah. David? No, he's a big dude. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. He looks like a pretzel, and you look like a toothpick standing next to him. <laughs> Ellington gets the call straight ahead to the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown. Well, there you go. That is Andre Ellington. Let's see if he got in, Wolf. He's not down. No, and he's in. Touch. Yep. That's a good call by the Zebras. You know, Andre Ellington flashing just a little bit. A lot of talk about that. David Johnson, I could roughly see him getting 60% of the snaps offensively with Chris Johnson receiving about 30%. And then maybe Andre Ellington as a specialist, so to speak, getting about 10, 15 percent, somewhere in there. And as we get towards the end of the season and should the Cardinals make the playoffs into January, David Johnson is going to get more and more touches, but they don't want to wear him out early in the year, giving him 20, 25 touches a game. Great point, David. No way. You can't milk that cow too often. Cat and Sarah puts it through and it's 17 10 Oakland. Andre Ellington did most of the work on that drive at a 35 yard run and then a five yard rush for a touchdown to get the Cardinals their first TD. Andre Ellington had only 45 rushes last year, but he averaged over six yards a carry. He's got three rushes for 41 yards here tonight and a five yard touchdown. Drive took less than three minutes. 83 yards, seven plays. Andre's problem has always been staying on the field. Yep. Yep. That is the problem right there. And again, it's one of the reasons why I love the rotation, the way it looks like it may be setting up for the Cardinals, because it will keep him fresh as well. The Andre Washington is deep, and this is going to be a touchback that will come out to the 25. The NFL adopting the college rule. The college game went to that a few years ago, where on touchbacks, on kickoffs only, uh, will come out to the 25 yard line. You can see the Raiders a couple of times already tonight. They're not trying to kick it out of that end zone. They're trying to hang it up there right around the goal line or better yet. Kick it left, kick it right. A directional kick. Well, if I think the Cardinals are going to do that during the regular season, but I think here in preseason, they're going to just have the cab and just kick it as, as far as you can. You're saying that there might be some team scouting right now, like the New England Patriots. Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, why, Keep why do guessing. it now? Here's DeAndre Washington tackled for a loss. It will be interesting as uh, Matthias Farley, rookie from Notre Dame, makes the tackle. It will be interesting to see if this actually serves the purpose the NFL is intending. They're trying to limit concussions and eventually get rid of the kickoff altogether. I know you hate that. You can't do it, David. You cannot eliminate the kickoff. You've got to be kidding me. Why in the world would you watch a butcher grind hamburger if you're not going to eat it? The other thing too about it is it, it's ceremonious. It, it's the start of the game. Something special about that opening kickoff. Coaches hate that idea because of the strategy factor. Well, plus onside kick, second half of the Super Bowl, right? Exactly. Saints. Run play on second and 12. Nowhere to go. Farley in there again, along with Josh Morrow. So it'll be third down and long here for Oakland. Boy, watch it in the middle right here. This is where it gets greasy, folks. Down inside. You jam up the box with your personnel group. Then all of a sudden, you got eight in the box. You got guys down there in the gaps, but in the gap, fighting for their lives. Rodney Gunter in there as well. Third down and ten. Back-to-back -back tackles by Matthias Farley, a guy who would shine in camp. Don't know if there's a spot for him, though. Safety on this roster. McGloin on third down to the sideline. Incomplete, but a flag. Brandon Williams got a hold of Johnny Holton. This will be a first down for Oakland. I actually think this is a good call. Once again, you want to talk about a baptism and a dark baptism by fire for Brandon Williams here tonight. It, I think he actually was there a little bit early. Pass interference. Offense, number 16. Oh. That penalty is declined the result of the play. Let's start down. They called it on Johnny Holton for pushing off. I think wow. Tyron Matthew agreed with you. He thought that Brandon wow. Williams was there early. So did I, but okay. 
Wow, all right. I mean, Jack Del Rio's laughing. The entire Cardinals sideline is laughing at that call. Wow. All right, now. <laughs> Maybe that will turn the tide for Brandon. Yeah, Ty thought that was funny, didn't he? Marquette King will punt J.J. Nelson back. He fumbled the last time. He had an opportunity to return a punt. The Raiders capitalized, turned it into a touchdown. King levels this one, and it's fair caught by Nelson. Play Shane Leckler for like 50 years, and then they go get Marquette King. He'll be around for another 50 for the Raiders at punter. 17-10 Oakland in front of Arizona. Time for our ground stats presented by Toro. Andre Ellington getting it done. A 35-yard run, followed by a five-yard touchdown run. Andre Ellington, a guy that, as you said earlier, David, they were going to build their entire team around offensively. And he could see him get it in. Kept those knees off the ground. No elbow on the ground either and stuck the pig out. Pay dirt. Boy, the depth of that position with David and Chris Johnson and Andre Ellington. Matt Barkley in the game at quarterback for the Cardinals now. He'll hand it off to Kerwin Williams. And Williams gets drilled at the 24-yard line, gain of two or three. Barkley, fourth year out of USC. The Cardinals got him in a trade from Philadelphia. Trying to make the roster here as a number three quarterback. He's been up and down throughout camp, according to the coach. Yeah, has not been very consistent. And he's got to show B.A. that he can master this offense. And we've seen it before. Quarterbacks have struggled with Bruce Arians offense coming in for the first year. Got him for a seventh round pick late last season. Barkley to throw here. And that one in the dirt trying to hit J.J. Nelson. Now Barkley starred at USC. Some thought had he left earlier that he may have been a first round draft pick. He ended up going in the fourth round. I don't think there was any doubt but you can see right there Matt wanted that back. Thought maybe you know what I had a chance to actually complete that out off the play action to JJ Nelson. See what Barkley does here in third and seven. Here comes pressure. Barkley drilled, but he completes it. Shipley caught it, then lost the ball. And they're going to say that it was incomplete. He never had possession. It's a good throw by Barkley. Jackson Shipley has caught everything in training camp. Couldn't hang on. Well, he was under pressure as well in the pocket right there. Did a great job of finding the open receiver, putting it right on him. I mean, that's a great throw by Matt Barkley. Boy, did he become a runner? Did, did he oh, no. secure that? Boy, I'll tell you, what is a catch? What isn't a catch? It's like trying to, Yeah, it's like trying to understand Summa Theologica. Two feet down, and you become a runner. When the officials talked with us at camp a week ago, they said that there has to be an element of time. Arizona is challenging the rolling of the field of an incomplete pass. Well, the question, though, was it recovered by the Cardinals? Or was, I thought it was recovered by the Raiders. So why would you challenge it if it's a, unless, there's, unless that he was down before the ball came out? Yeah, that's exactly. what B.A. thinks. He was down, and therefore it should be a first down for the Cardinals. Let's see here. Okay. There's one foot. There's the second foot. I think he's established himself as a runner, but uh, the ball's out, though. The ball was kind of moving, was it not, David? We'll come back. We'll, we'll talk more during the break here. We'll, we'll argue a little bit and come back with the ruling. Thomas Aquinas. Bruce Arians challenging the ruling in the field of an incompletion. Again, the emphasis now is did enough time elapse. Now, officials can't seem to agree on how much time has to elapse. For it After to be review, passed. the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was an incomplete pass. Arizona will be charged with a second timeout. Also, Arizona has used their second challenge and will have no more challenges remaining throughout the ballgame. Well, if I think you hit it earlier, you said B.A.'s bored, and, and he just has to throw the challenge back. He's not calling plays tonight, so he doesn't have a whole lot to do. The only thing B.A. is actually doing tonight is determining whether or not they go for it on fourth down. He told me that earlier himself. That was it. Butler punting. Jadon Mickens is deep for the Raiders. And 
Mickens across the 40-yard line. Mickens into Cardinal territory. A penalty marker comes flying in. Kerwin Williams on the tackle. We'll see if it comes back, though. During the return, holding return team number 35. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Oakland. All right, let's take a look at David Johnson through our zoom lens presented by Hyundai, proud partner of the Arizona Cardinals. Well, David Johnson puts the freak into Freaky Friday. You just watch him right here on the little slip screen. He comes out. The Cardinals use him in so many different ways. You can see how dangerous he is once he gets into the open field. He's got speed to take it to the house. Now you line him up as a wide receiver. You watch him. You throw him the ball underneath, right? High percentage throw. Just let him do what he does. And again, as a wide receiver, not really as a running back that can catch the ball. He can run five routes, four routes, six routes. He's a wide out when he lines up on the line outside of the backfield. Good open field tackle by Sean Prater on Gabe Holmes. Just going back to how Johnson was drafted, if you saw all or nothing, Steve Kime, the GM, thought he was going to get Amir Abdullah in the second round. Instead, Abdullah is taken by the Lions. The Cardinals select David Johnson in the third round. He gets over 1,000 yards from scrimmage, a total of 13 touchdowns, including a kick return for a score. DeAndre Washington, a big hole, makes the defender miss. That was a sweet move by Washington, and he's all the way to the 35-yard line. Wow. That is all night long. You can see the Raiders, they have been running the ball in between the tackle, right? A little power move right here. Pull the uncovered lineman around. You can see Washington put the juke on Marquis Christian. And that's the thing. See, Marquis Christian is a guy that wants to come up, and he wants to put the hat on you. But you better... You better be careful because in the NFL, this is what they'll do to you. And then the next time, they'll run you over. First down from the 35-yard line. McGloin in trouble, gets out of there. And the pass incomplete. Okafor had pressure that time on McGloin. Boy, that was nice right there once again coming off the edge, right? Watch Alex Okafor to the right of your screen. Oh, he gets the arm under coming around, doing a great job. Get a little bit of that jersey. It was just enough to allow McGloin to make a poor throw. Good pressure by Alex Okafor. McGloin out on the flat, and Cario Brooks is right there to drag down Holmes. He fumbled the ball. And the Cardinals have it. Boy, that'll get James Betcher all fired up right here. Trying to throw the wide receiver screen. Cario Brooks doing a great job fighting off the block. Getting in there, making the tackle. And then here comes the strip right there. Chris Clemens knocked it free. And Brandon Williams with the fumble recovery. Boy, that is the thing about the National Football League, right? You better have that pig. You better have it secured. Or that thing's coming out. Good for Brandon, too. Get something good to feel, uh, feel good about. Something good to happen here after getting beat a couple times. Well, I'll tell you, that's going to be it's going to be a small consolation prize compared to what has happened tonight. Matt Barkley out there for another series. He'll likely play through the third quarter, and then we'll see Jacob Coker. Kerwin Williams gets the call straight ahead. And a gain of three to the 40-yard line. Love James that. Are on the tackle that time. Sorry about that, David. Love that at the point of attack, right? All you're doing is running inside zone. That is it. That is a north-south play right there. You get good movement. At the point of attack, you see Big John Wetzel. Yeah, he's a little shaken up on that. Still is. The Wolf, he's trying to make the team as a backup tackle. Earl Watford not available tonight due to injury. Watford's a backup center guard and tackle. Here's Kerwin Williams again, and Williams has the first down. To the Raider 46-yard line.
It's a 14 yard run. Boy, you love this. This is what the Arizona Cardinals love. Look at Troy Nicholas come off on that tray block. Came off on Allen, the safety right there. Did a great job. Boy, that is nice at the point of attack. A good read by Kerwin Williams. This guy, don't go to sleep on 33. I mean, they're going to keep four. He can return kickoffs, and he's a good team's player. Remember, he was the Cardinals running back in the playoffs two years ago at Carolina. Here's Williams again. And that offensive line got some push, but then Wetzel couldn't hold his block on Brandon Jackson. No gain. You talk about, I think, Wolf, certainly the biggest concern for me on offense, it's not even close, is the depth on the offensive line. Well, I think you're right. Absolutely, when it comes to the position rooms, David. I think overall, schematically, when you talked about the tactical end of it, I would have to say it's protection. Protecting Carson Palmer. Uh, there, there is nothing else that is more important. Not one other thing you could point to and say that's more important than protecting three. Barkley dumping it off to Stephon Taylor. Taylor Wetzel out there blocking, and Taylor's to the 30-yard line. First down for the Cardinals on a 16-yard screen pass. <laughs> You see him? Look at big John Wetzel out there in front of him as well. Evan Bame doing a nice job getting a block. Little dump, and here come the big boys. Look at Wetzel. You don't know what to do. He's just going to run out there, maybe fall on the ground, roll over, beetle on his back. Obviously, you got Valdir, Upati, Shipley, Mathis, DJ Humphreys. Those are your starting five, and then Earl Watford. But you're likely going to keep eight. Maybe nine offensive linemen, so their job's to be one up front. Stephon Taylor trying to cut it back. It's back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by T.J. Carey, but no gain of the play. Stephon Taylor, this guy runs the ball very, very well in between the tackles. Gets those dirty yards that you need. He's also the best running back the Arizona Cardinals have when it comes to blitz pickup. That's so important. You need to be able to do that if you're going to play for Bruce Arians and all those six-man protections that he carries. Barkley in trouble on second down. Has to get rid of it before he gets cream. James Kowser was back there and hit Barkley. So it's third down and ten. I like this reaction right here, right? Getting rid of the ball. Well, Rob a, Crisp there, Wolf. What, what was he doing there? Well, he obviously, there was a, absolutely. There was a mental breakdown right there. A big, fat Emmy. That's going to get his name on the board. BA's probably going to call him out in the team meeting. Start yelling at him. Crisp, another guy trying to make the roster. The backup right tackle as of now. And Williams has a huge hole before he's dragged down at the 20. Four yard line. I love that. How about that? The old quick hitter. Chuck Noll would be so approving of that play. But he's short of the marker. They tried to catch the Raiders off guard. It's fourth down. And Chandler Catanzaro will try a 41 yard field goal. Good work for your kicker here, right? Good work for the long snapper. We talked about that battle there as well. The entire process lining up, and kicking a field goal. Snap, hold, kick. That was Canada with the snap, and Cat Zero misses it wide to the left. The rare miss for Cat Zero is 28 of 31 a year ago. It remains 17 10, Raiders. 17-10 Raiders have the lead in the football. This season, Sanderson Ford will recognize our servicemen and women through the Seats for Soldiers program. This week, we honor Technical Sergeant Peter Ong, Jr. of the Air Force National Guard. For more, go to SandersonFord.com. So a missed field goal by Chandler Catanzaro. And the Raiders take over at their 31-yard line. Matt McGloin still in a quarterback for Oakland. Veteran Marcel Reese in the game at running back. And they swing it out. 
into the flat and close to a first down to the 30 yard line is Seth Roberts. Marquis Christian in coverage. Christian. Yeah, right now it's like Matt McGloin's getting in the huddle and saying, throw the ball at Brandon Williams on two. Ready? <laughs> Break. Williams has played the entire first half as we expected he would. Here's Reese getting the carry and going nowhere. Alex Okafor wraps him up, throws him down for a loss. Alex Okafor, one of those guys that really has had a great training camp. That is a nice play. Watch him right here. Come off, get off the block, and make the strong tackle. He's a Alex. really good player, Wolf. I, I agree, David. I think he can really help this team as a backup outside linebacker. I agree. He's going to be in that rotation out there. I think he's one of the four on the outside edge. The starters, Chandler Jones and Marcus Golden. Third down and three for the Raiders. McGloin's pass is caught as a flag down in the backfield. Close to a first down of the play is Michael Rivera. Chris Clemens got onto the ground. But again, a penalty marker thrown in the backfield. Hey, holding the hands, hands to the face. Offense number 73. Ten yard penalty. Replay, third down. Matt McCants has had his hands full trying to block Alex Okafor. Well, I'll tell you, you can watch Alex Okafor right here. And you can all, oh, there it is. Hand gets high right, hand at the face. Boy, I'll tell you, they, they hit McGloin. Yeah, Did you late. see that? Xavier <laughs> Williams. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think the Cardinals dodged a bullet right there. Xavier Williams face to face on the cue. That's a big no no. Third and 13 now for Oakland, closing in on two minutes remaining here in the first half. McGloin with time. And that pass just short intended for Johnny Holton with Brandon Williams covering. And so the Cardinals will get some work with a two minute offense. Yeah, take a picture of that right there. A little Tampa two being played by James Betcher. Two safeties high with a Mike Backer running down the middle of the field on number two. JJ Nelson had a fumble earlier in the game. He's the Cardinals number one punt returner. Although at some point during the regular season we'll probably see Patrick Peterson back there time or two. Marquette King who's been crushing the ball. This is a short punt but it's a, a line drive and takes a few bounces back to the 15. Here's Nelson. He's out of bounds around the 25. 57 yard punt with no hang time. Literally 17 10 Raiders Cardinals and their two minute offense if we come back. Dave Pacheron Wolfley Jody Jackson back at the University of Phoenix Stadium our fourth broadcast booth brought to you by your Arizona four dealers. And in the second half we will be honored to have Steve Kime the general manager there's Michael Bidwell the Cardinals team president who hired Steve four years ago. Time a long time scout worked his way up through the system and then Michael gave him a chance to be the general manager and then they worked together to hire Bruce Arians. What do you see that shine right there <laughs> on that dome. Let me tell you now. That is glistening. <laughs> you want me to tell him you said that when he comes in here at halftime. Got a little sweat running down the head. So do you move further down to your right would you first down on the 25 yard line Barkley's pass in the double coverage incomplete. He was trying to hit Jackson Shipley. Yeah that ball was overthrown badly. Carson Palmer went three of five. Played a series and then Drew Stanton came in finished the first quarter. Had an interception. And now Matt Barkley working the second and third quarters tonight. He'll throw again here on second and ten. And this pass is pulled in. First down of the 40-yard line, Ifani Moma. 
Boy, you love to see that right there from Matt Barkley. Bouncing back like that. A bad throw to a great throw. Look at Ifani Moma right here running that out. Barkley's pass incomplete on the sideline. Trying to hit Chris Hubert, who has shined in camp, but the wide receiver position is maybe the deepest in the NFL. Michael Floyd, Larry Fitzgerald, John Brown, Jerron Brown, and J.J. Nelson. We know for sure those five guys are on the roster. Yes. The question is, do they keep a sixth? And what can they, you do for me in transition, right. David? What can you do for me on special teams? And Britton Golden played just about every special team last year. Hubert, undrafted rookie, trying to make the roster as Barkley steps up here and slides to the 44-yard line, third down. I'd like to see Matt Barkley competing here. I really do. You make a bad throw, you come back, make a great throw. That was a good decision to tuck it and run. Minute to go. Barkley has time. Dumps it off to MoMA, who gets the first down. Into Raider territory. I love this guy right here. I really do. A light pole with eyebrows, but this is a guy that really could have been a major contributor to the Arizona Cardinals and what they were going to do last year before he got hurt. Remember that training camp he yeah. was having, David? Yep. The preseason he was having? Ifani Moma can be a player in this league. And I think he's one of the four. One of the four tight ends they'll keep because they run more 12, 12 personnel than almost anybody. That's what you said earlier that you, you recognize Bruce Aarons likes to use two tight end systems. I think it, it, as Barkley throws on first down and complete, trying to Shipley was grabbed that time by T.J. Carey. You think, Wolf, we're going to see a lot of one back, no tight ends this year, right? Because of the versatility of David Johnson? Oh, David, yes, I do. They call it flush personnel. Pass Defense, number 38. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic. First down. All right, explain that to me when you say flush. What do you mean? Okay, 10 personnel. You got one back. You got no tight ends. Thus, 10, David. Well, what does that mean? You're left with the assumption if you have one back, no tight ends, you got four wide receivers. Four wide receivers. And those wide receivers, Larry Fitzgerald, Michael Floyd, J.J. Nelson, John Brown, and David Johnson. That is an explosive combination. Barkley throwing it deep for Nelson and threw it out of bounds. And you think about David Johnson and where you can line him up so you could start with one running back, four receivers, and motion him out so that you got empty backfield and five wide receivers. And Johnson basically is a wide receiver. Yeah, what a matchup nightmare that's going to be. I mean, you've got a guy who weighs 229 pounds. What are you going to do? You're going to put a corner on him? Because this kid can run a sub 4-4. Four -four. Kid you not, David Johnson, 229 pounds. We have seen it. You're going to put a linebacker on him? A, a strong safety? This kid can run wide receiver routes. He is dangerous, explosive, and a defensive coordinator nightmare. Barkley on second down, trying for Nelson again. David Johnson had 36 catches last year, 450 receiving yards and four receiving touchdowns. He also had eight rushing touchdowns. And I think he is now the centerpiece of this offense. And you talked about when you take him off the field, You've got good players behind him, but this is, you know, the, the coaches think this guy has a chance to be a perennial pro bowler. And I think so, too. Well, the, the reason why I believe that is the case is because of the person that he is. That is a strong man and a squared away individual. Barkley's passing complete, trying to hit Kerwin Williams. So it's fourth down with 35 seconds left, fourth and 10. Cardinals will punt it. Very, very humble. Yes. There's going to be this wall of success that I believe is going to rush at David Johnson this year. He had it last year, no denying it. But I mean, this year, it's going to be 10 times as bad as what it was last year. Is he going to ride on top of that wave, David, or is he going to get crushed by it? At 1,000 yards from scrimmage, over 1,600 all-purpose yards. Joe Hansley is the return man. Butler's punt goes into the end zone for a touchback. And again, on punts that go into the end zone, it'll still come out to the 20-yard line. It's just on kickoffs. Where on touchbacks, possession will begin at the 25. 
Well, we saw David Johnson last year in camp show flashes. Then he got injured. That led to the signing of Chris Johnson. So Chris Johnson was the starter. Remember, David Johnson only started five games. And he really didn't have, even though he had plenty of touchdowns, that breakout game until Philly when he rushed for almost 200 yards and three scores. Well, there's no doubt going into 2016, he's the guy. David Johnson, the one thing he's got to do better is in blitz pickup. He's got to do a better job of picking up those second tier and third tier blitzers. Also had some trouble holding onto the ball last year. Here's a screen to Roberts, and he couldn't hold on to it. Incomplete. Well, Matt McGloy's got to feel pretty good, David, about what he's laid down here on film. He has done an excellent job here tonight. Made some really money throws. And he's got two touchdown passes in this game. I think for, for him it's just a matter of will Jack Del Rio keep three quarterbacks? Because you know Connor Cook is going to be on the team. Yep. They keep three. I think McGloin will have a roster spot. Raiders just going to run the ball here. DeAndre Washington to about the 25, and that will likely be the, the final play of the half here. You see Marquis Christian come up there. Get a little Washington grease. I mean, this guy came all the way down from the middle of the field to lay the lumber. So the Cardinals will go to the locker room down by 7, 17 to 10. Turnover is a problem. Consecutive giveaways by the Cardinals that led to those two touchdown passes by Matt McGloy. Raiders 17, Arizona 10, one half of the books in the 2016 preseason. We are ready for the third quarter preseason game number one. The Raiders on top of the Cardinals, Dave Pash, Ron Wolfley. Now let's check in with the third member of our crew. Here's Jody Jackson. All right, Coach, first team offense. I know you always want to score a touchdown, obviously, but uh, what were your thoughts on what those guys did? I thought it was a real good drive. You know, went down the red zone and uh, kind of got held on the screen to Larry. But uh, I thought we came out with, uh, with a good purpose with our starters, offensively and defensively. Two turnovers cost us, you know, gave them easy short fields. We got to get one back. It looked like they really went after Brandon Williams. Is that what you expect with a guy like that? Uh, Brandon's going to get it. They're going after him all the time. I thought he held his own real well. As far as Andre Ellington and Troy Nicholas on that one drive, when you see those two guys healthy, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, Troy's been hurt for two years now, and he's been coming on like gangbusters and uh, had a great camp. It's, it's fun to see Andre healthy again. Finally, you mentioned the turnovers. J.J. Nelson had one of them. What do special teams have to show you in this half? We have blocked better, and, uh, and we got to hold on to the football. You know, we got we got we got need a return. We need something to happen to get a short field. Right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, head coach Bruce Arians, guys. He talked about the holding on to the ball. J.J. Nelson fumbled on a punt return. That led to one of the two Matt McGloin touchdown passes. He also mentioned Troy Nicholas, who had a 32-yard reception in that first half. Carson Palmer was 3 of 5. Drew Stanton 2 of 6 with an interception. Matt Barkley was 3 of 11. And we'll likely see Barkley this entire third quarter before giving way to Jacob Coker. Well, you heard VA talk about it a little bit. We need a return here. Got to make something happen. A big play. And there's no better place to do that but in transition on special teams. Jackson Shipley was on the practice squad last year. Is the return man here for Arizona. Moon kick. Shipley across the 10. And again, the Cardinals unable to get to the 20-yard line. It's been a problem all night. Once a penalty marker down on the play. Yeah, once again, David, I do believe this is going to be the strategy. If you know, if you're a special teams coach and you know you got a bunch of grunts, a bunch of guys that know how to cover and you feel good. Outside kicking team has a five-yard penalty tacked on the end of the return, first down. Why wouldn't you do that? Go ahead, have confidence. Unless you're you're playing a team that is just an excellent return team with a dangerous return man, right? You got confidence in your cover team? Go ahead, directional kick it. Let your cover grunts do the work. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll come up, down a lot to who the return man is. Do you, do you want to give such and such a shot 
at a return, or do you want to just kick it through the end zone, take your chances with him starting in the 25? And how you've been covering kicks, too. Barkley on first down, and that pass on the money. Out to the 32-yard line to Bundy. And a gain of about 10, Marquise Bundy. Well, I love that. That's a hootie hoo right there, David. That was Barkley just saying, hey, you know what? Uh, do you see what I see right here? They actually had a running play called on that. Matt Barkley said, what do you say we go to work? Boom. Took it out. Hit the slant. Bundy's a big guy. 6'4", 215. Rookie out of New Mexico. College free agent. And Barkley, the quarterback in his fourth NFL season and played in a lot of games, though, as the Cardinals run it on first and 10. And again, maybe a yard. Stephon Taylor. Brought down by James Kowser. This is the area the Cardinals really need to get a lot better in. They need to be able to run the ball, right? A good rushing team last year. Don't get me wrong. They ran the ball just fine. But if there's one area I think they can improve the most, David, it's in the rushing attack, in the running game. That's one of the reasons they went out and got Evan Mathis. No doubt. The started right guard, 12-year pro, was with the Broncos last year. And you have Mikey Potty returning, of course, at left guard as Barkley puts that one right on the numbers to Jackson Shipley. Barkley's best throw, not just of tonight, but of training camp. That was a beautiful toss to the Raider 46-yard line, 21 yards. Boy, that is a great throw because he double-clutched it. And there you go, Jackson Shipley lining up in the slot right here, right? Oh, it's the wheel route. The old flatten up. And that's exactly why Barkley double clutched. He did that on purpose to make him bite on the flat. So first and 10 on the Oakland 46. Play fake for Barkley. Has to elude pressure. Another dart to Shipley. Inside the 20. And out of bounds after a 30-yard gain to the 16-yard line. Oh, Matt Barkley right now like a surgeon. Watch him step up in the pocket right here on the play action. Avoid the rush and then throw the dart right in the face of a little bit of pressure. You got Shipley on the crossing route. That is a great throw. But Matt Barkley operated from the pocket. Shalik Calhoun was back there. But Barkley did a nice job stepping up. Barkley's completed three in a row. He's going to hand it off here, though, to Stephon Taylor. who gets two yards to the 14-yard line. Corey Toomer has made a lot of plays tonight for the Raiders. In on the stop. This defense for Oakland, you, you look at their front seven. Khalil Mack, the addition of Bruce Irvin, Ben Heaney, a second-round, a second-year pro from Kansas who they really like. Jack Del Rio and Reggie McKenzie, you and I had a chance to talk to Reggie before the game. They've built a nice roster. This team won seven games last year. 2002 was their last winning season. I think they're going to have one here in, in 2016. Watch out for this team. I agree, David. Reggie McKenzie understands line play and play inside the box on both sides of the ball. Delay a game. Barkley didn't call for the snap in time, or Bain, the center, didn't snap it. And maybe that was on Bain looking at Barkley's reaction. First penalty on the Cardinals. Yeah, you can see Matt Barkley. Barkley was like, Evan, what are you doing? And you snap the ball. Do you hear me clapping my hands? Snap the ball, Evan Bain. A learning curve for, for Bain. They have so much of their center here. A.Q. Shipley comes in as the starter, and it's either Bain or Watford as the backup center. Yep. Evan Bain. Evan Bain is going to play in this league. But he's got a lot of learning to do. And it's not going to be pretty. Barkley on second down. Screen. Nicholas inside the 10. And down to the 6-yard line. Close to the first down. He'll come up just a yard short. Boy, he reminds me of Baby Huey. I mean, if you've ever looked at his face, Troy Nicholas, it's unbelievable. Look at Evan Babe right here. Going to work, right? Nice little screen. Oh, little back block. Doing a nice job right there. That showed a little nuance. You got to have feel when you run those screens, David. You got to feel your way out if you're an offensive lineman. How disappointed are you, though, that Evan Bain does not have the eye black tonight? Did you I notice know. that? It's unbelievable. What are you doing, Evan Bain? 
I mean, here's a guy that, did you ever see the way he used to paint oh, his yeah. face? I did his, his games when he was in Missouri. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, what are you doing? I, I don't even know how you could do that. You come out here, National Football League, you come out here, you're going to play in your first preseason game, and you forgot the eye black? Hey, Evan, smear it on. Smear, get the eye black, one for the family, one for my dad, and then streak it down and say to yourself, one for what I must become. Can you stop slobbering on my microphone? I'm like 10 feet to your left. Third down and one. Here's Stephon Taylor. Spins out of a tackle and appears to have the first down. We talked about Taylor getting those dirty yards. Second and one, third and one. A lot of times he's getting hit at the point of attack. He makes yeah. a defender miss here and get the first down. Well, you know what? Yeah, a little spin right there. He's just got a feel for running the football inside the tackles. Gets those dirty, nasty yards and converts on third down, third and short when you really need it, right? Love the way he runs the ball in between the tackles. First and goal for the Cardinals. We're going to tie the game here. It's Taylor, and he cuts it back for a touchdown. Penalty marker is down, though. It's coming back. Offense, number 87. 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. That was right in front of the official there. Troy Nicholas called for holding. Negates the touchdown by Taylor. Well, you go ahead and you watch it right there. I don't know if it's Troy Nicholas, 87, or if it's Rob Chris, 67. I think they could have gotten two right here. You watch it on the replay, right? There's the tackle. Crisp coming out. You can see Troy Nicholas as well. Yeah. I think they, they got Nicholas. I, I think they got both. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, the first exactly. Time. But yeah. I think All the I above. think they did indeed throw it at Troy Nicholas right there. Got to do a better job. Can't overplay that outside shoulder. And when you saw Stephon Taylor actually get outside, you knew that might be a problem in and of itself because he rarely goes out there. So first and goal from the 15-yard line now. Barkley throwing. And it's picked off inside the 10. Nico Thorpe takes it back to the 28-yard line. So instead of a touchdown, it's a holding call and then a pick. Third turnover by the Cardinals. Well, turnovers, of course, have been the bane of Bruce Arians and the Arizona Cardinals here tonight. Boy, but I'll tell you, very impressed with a tackle by Cole Toner. Smart guy, too. Cardinals general manager Steve Keim will join us when we come back. 17-10 Raiders. Back at University of Phoenix Stadium, the Raiders on top of the Cardinals 17-10. Welcome back to the booth. Dave Pash, Ron Wolfley, our good buddy Steve Keim, the general manager of the Cardinals. Done an outstanding job with this club, getting them uh, to be a Super Bowl contender. NFC Championship appearance. Uh, last year. Steve, what do you see so far in this game on both sides of the ball? Well, I mean, I think it confirms some of the things that we saw early on in camp with some of the guys who've made vast improvements. But, you know, I, I think, you know, from a concern standpoint, you'd have to point towards special teams. Uh, some of the turnovers, obviously, with three turnovers so far. So we have to clean up some of the little things, the red zone effectiveness. But there's no doubt in my mind that uh, Coach will have some great teaching points tomorrow. Steve, how about Brandon Williams? Here's a guy that has played so well in training camp, right? Looks so good. Coming out here, getting tested quite a bit, right? What have you seen from Brandon Williams today? Well, I mean, there's no doubt that anybody that's going to play opposite Patrick Peterson is going to get tested. Um, and, and, you know, with, with Brandon, we knew that there would be some growing pains. But, you know, with his size, his length, his athleticism, some of the things he's done early on um, have been fascinating for a guy who's only played one year at corner. But tonight, you know, he was he was challenged early, did some good things, and again, some, some great teaching points for our coaching staff tomorrow. All right, so that's the rookie on defense everybody's watching. I know the guy on offense everybody's watching isn't a rookie, he's a second-year player, but DJ Humphreys didn't play last year, so he's basically a rookie. What did you see in the first half, Steve? Well, uh, again, I think that uh, just level of urgency has, has vastly improved. And, and, and you forget some of these guys that we've drafted, uh, whether it's DJ, whether it's uh, Troy Nicholas. I mean, we're talking about 22, 23-year-old men. And, and, and you just look for improvement, particularly from DJ's standpoint, the technical aspect, um, because he's got to improve on his footwork and his hand placement. Um, but he has really, really made some huge strides for us this year. Raiders go three and up, up to punt the ball. 
Steve, you guys made major news here uh, about a week ago when you signed Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald to extensions. I know Cardinal fans were thrilled when that happened. Can, can you kind of take us through how that went down? Well, I mean, I think it's all about roster certainty and, and, and looking at the number of free agents that we have entering 2017. Um, and with the conversations that I had with Larry and Carson, um, knowing that those guys wanted to be back uh, or continue to play at a high level, even at their age, um, we wanted to not only reward them, but extend them. And again, that really helps us from a roster certainty standpoint when you're managing the cap moving forward, knowing where we stand. And, and those guys, there's no question, um, in my opinion, that, that Larry and Carson are a huge reason for our, our success. Steve, do you see this team as having a window a window of success, a a Super Bowl window, if you will, of two or three years. And are you working towards that end if you do? Well, I hope not, because if that's the case, I'm going to be out of a job in a couple of years. But, you know, I, I think more than anything, um, we know we have a good thing going. We want to continue to keep the core in place. And, and, and you know, I, I've heard people say, wow, you guys are really going for it. You're making a trade for a pass rusher. You're drafting Robert Kandice. You're doing some different things where you feel like you have a window. Well, to me, in this, in this business, you have to go for it every year. I mean, our fans don't want to hear that we're in a rebuilding phase. So, to me, you got to continue to stay aggressive and proactive and, and keep your foot on the gas pedal. Barkley's pass high and incomplete. You mentioned Chandler Jones. I know that was uh, an area of concern last year, having that elite pass rusher. They're hard to find. And you get one for, for a second round pick. Yeah, so far as uh, good as advertised. He's been um, really, really good so far, not only in the locker room, but on the practice field. You know, he's a different type of player. Well, he's long and he's angular. Um, doesn't give you a lot of surface uh, to, to punch as an offensive lineman. Um, so he's given our guys fits every day. I mean, Jared Veldier made a comment to me the other day that, you know, th th this player has made him much better. That in his six, seven years in the NFL, he hasn't had that type of guy to go against in practice every day. Some of the older vets, some of the guys that are core players here, Name a couple of guys that you think just having an outstanding training camp. Well, I, I don't even know if I would say um, veterans, but but tonight uh, was was proof already that Troy Nicholas has made huge strides. Yes. I mean, I'm talking about a guy who has come in uh, in excellent shape. Uh, we all know that injuries were a concern in the past. Troy stayed healthy so far, and uh, he's having as good a camp as I've seen. I mean, he has been physical in the run game. As you've seen tonight, he's doing some stuff in the passing game. So Troy can be a complete player in this league. Uh, he just needs to take that next step. Hubert with a first down catch, and that'll move the sticks out to the 31-yard line. What about Robert Kimdichie? We haven't seen him yet, obviously, because of the ankle injury. Uh, I, I know when you drafted him in the first round, it, as late as you guys were picking to get a talent like Kimdichie, and I'm sure this veteran locker room has helped a guy like Robert. Yeah, I don't I don't think um, there's any question and, and so far uh, Robert has been fantastic in the locker room uh, early on through OTAs and offseason uh, workouts. Um, he's worked his tail off. He's 310 pounds right now um, with very little body fat for a defensive lineman. And you saw the twitch and the explosiveness that he possesses through his hips uh, early on in practice. So we're looking forward to getting him back in the next week or week and a half um, from the ankle injury, and he'll be ready to go. I told Wolf, wait till you see him in pads. You'll just stand there and stare at him. He looks pretty good without the pads. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's wearing pads. I mean, look at, look at him standing next to Chandler Jones. One guy has pads on, one guy doesn't. They look about the same. Second and nine. Matt Barkley at quarterback. And they run the ball for about two to the 34 yard line. Your roster right now, Steve, I, I mean, 53. You got to be able to cut down to that, obviously. I see a roster right now 57, 58, 59 NFL players. That's going to be tough to do. It is, and we're going to have some tough decisions to make. Um, yet at the same time, as I pointed to special teams tonight, um, that should clear up some of the questions. Now, at the end of the day, we have to improve in that area. I mean, whether it's lane integrity or the athlete, athletes that we're sending down on cover units, we got to do a better job. And that was one of our goals this offseason, was to get longer and more athletic on special teams in the back end of our secondary. Here's Barkley on third down and seven. Gets hit as he throws deep into triple coverage. And it's incomplete. Late penalty marker thrown in the backfield. 
Go right there. You can see Matt Barkley throwing the ball, trying to hit the corner route. And as he was letting that go, Personal got hit. Foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 94. Throwing the quarterback to the ground. Roll after he throwing the ball. That's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Greg Townsend Jr. The guilty man for the Raiders, so it's an automatic first down. What kind of a camp has Matt Barkley had? I, I know that you obviously are set with your starter and your backup. But what have you seen from Barkley throughout camp and the night? You know, I, I think with Matt, it's a consistency factor. He's uh, he's made some nice throws. He's done some good things in camp. Um, but I think from a consistency standpoint, um, we're just looking for a little more out of Matt. And he's a great kid. He works his tail off. Um, so I think that the longer he's going to be in this offense, the better chance he has to improve. Good run by Elijah Penny, big back rookie out of Idaho. How about this kid right here, Steve? Running the football. This is a this is a big running back, isn't it? Yeah, he caught our eye early on in camp. Um, I should say in mini camp, you know, because of his size and how light he is on his feet. He's got uh, really good balance and shows some lateral cut ability for a big man. So he's got a chance. And um, you know, in that room, you're going to need those type of physical skills to stand out because we have some talent and depth there. Barkley off play action. Tried to hit MoMA, and it's intercepted again. There is a penalty marker down. Picked off by Keith McGill. Yeah, I think what they're going to get here is Ifani MoMA coming across the middle. They're going to get a hold here. Pass interference on the defense. Pass interference. Defense, number 41. The ball in place with a spot on the foul. Automatic first down. Funny moments made a couple of plays here tonight, right? Yeah. I go back to last training camp, Steve, and I think of the preseason last year. Yeah. This guy was going to be a factor on this team, wasn't he? Yeah, he's another interesting story, a guy that uh, we saw at the veteran combine um, at our facility. And uh, because of the injury last year, uh, that was a huge setback for him. But, you know, he's a guy as a, you know, more of an F type in our, in our offense where he's a move tight end. Um, his ability to create mismatches in the passing game is, is intriguing. Um, not, not the guy you really want on the, on the line of scrimmage as your hammer, but he can create some mismatches in the passing game and really understands how to run routes. Jack Del Rio wants to, to challenge that because he felt the ball was tipped. It was tipped by MoMA. It, it has to be tipped at, at the line of scrimmage or downfield <laughs> before it gets to the receiver, before he, he wave off pass interference. Well, either that or he was adopting Bill Belichick to be able to challenge anything. Including calls made by the officials. Here's Penny on first down, wrapped up at the point of attack, no gain. Steve, you weren't watching. You were in the uh, the owner's booth earlier, where Wolf made a comment about the shine on your head. So <laughs> here's your chance to get Wolf back. I want you to break down what happened at practice last week, right here. Well, as you can see, you'd have to describe Wolf as a little top heavy. Uh, the balance and the strength on his feet is not what it once was, which I said the other day on the radio. What was that uh, that song, Wolf? Not as good as I once was. <laughs> Except something like that, Steve. All but, I could say was BMI. <laughs> which means what? Another loss here is Penny. Body mass index. <laughs> dropped, right? For a loss. By Corey James. Well, who has expects Fitz, that? Has Fitz gotten you? Because I, whenever he runs off the sideline, I'm always watching the entire way because I know what he might do if you're not paying attention. He, is, he has not only gotten me, he's gotten me on game day in the suit. So, uh, you know, he, he's, I'll tell you what, he's a prankster. When I feel him coming by me, I take several steps back. See, that was the th thing right there. I felt the shoulder pad into the back, so I knew it was a player, but I turned around to see who it was. I couldn't actually get the number. I couldn't get the number as I was falling forward, but as I was going down, it flashed. It's got to be Fitz. Barkley on third and long through the hands of MoMA. Oh, that was a really good throw by Barkley with the defender, Darius Latham, right in his grill. MoMA couldn't hang on. That's the catch that he'd make last year. That was the kind of preseason he was having. What a great throw in the face of pressure. By Matt Barkley. Man, I, I mean, you got to catch Eddie Funny, and I think he probably knows that. Joe Hansley deep here. Well, they're going to try to pin the Raiders inside the 10, and he does. 
Steve, thanks for stopping by. Always great to talk to you, buddy. Thanks, man. Thanks, Steve. Cardinals GM Steve Kime. Arizona trails the Raiders 17-10 late third. Welcome back to our Ford broadcast booth, brought to you by your Arizona Ford dealers. The Arizona Cardinals coming off an NFC West Division title and an appearance in the NFC Championship game for the second time. Aiming for Houston in Super Bowl 51. Raiders with a first and 10, and Connor Cook is in at quarterback as the Raiders operate from their nine yard line. DeAndre Washington gets a couple of yards before he's brought down by Tristan Opalalugo, who had 23 sacks in the CFL the last couple of years, trying to make an NFL roster in 2016. Did you say Opalalugo? Yeah. Interesting. Why? Well, I just wanted to see that I could say it as well. <laughs> you know, it's Apollo Lugo. Well, I said it first, which makes it easier for you. <laughs> yes, you yes it, it does. You get fooled up by the K I in get, the last I game. could get a little sideways on that one now. Cook throws a completion to Marvin Hall, and he's gang tackled at the 15-yard line, a four-yard pickup. Donald Butler there for the Cardinals. He was a starter in San Diego last year. Battled injury, though. Yeah, this is a quality pickup. This is a classic kind time sign, Donald Butler. I mean, here's a guy that can play in this league. And all he needs is the opportunity to show that he's healthy here again. I think he's got a real shot of making this team. Here's Cook on third down and four. Finds Washington on the backfield. And he's loose, and he's got speed. Dragged down at the 47-yard line by Christian. Opala Lugo was trying to cover DeAndre Washington, and that was no contest. 32 well, yards. You watch Washington come out of the backfield right there, too, and he ran an angle route. Watch him come out. Bam. Now, all of a sudden, he comes back inside, and Tristan Opala Lago no, was... you got it wrong. I did? I, I butchered it? <laughs> yeah. You, yep, you should have stopped. Just well, there Tristan. it was right there, there Tristan. That's what I'm going to call him from now on, Big T. Big T got fooled on that. The angle route by Washington. Draw play to Atkinson. Breaks a tackle. And look out. Down the sideline. Atkinson will take it to the house. Touchdown Raiders. 53 yards. Wow. But how about Atkinson with the Jets in the pants? That was very, very impressive. Yeah, sure, you can talk about the fact he's going against a lot of guys trying to make their way in the league, but you can see it right there. Donald Butler just ran upfield. Cardinals had it totally figured out and just ran themselves right out of the play. Should have been a three-yard gain. It turns into a 53-yard gain. That drive started on the Raider 9. It took them two minutes to get a touchdown. Still looks pretty good right there on Phil. Show those kind of jets. And the point after makes it 24 to 10 Raiders. Uh, you never know what you're going to get with uh, Raider fans. Well, I think you need some hand tattoos like that guy's <laughs> got there. You look good with a hand tattoo. Well, that is sweet right there. David, how about you in the nose ring? <laughs> I can see you with the big old nose ring in right there. I, right? Don't, know that, uh, I don't know that it would fit in my big nose. I think you'd need quite the size, quite the big ring. Well, that would go over like a Led Zeppelin, wouldn't it? Shipley is the deep man. He's going to run it out here about five years. Oh, he's not going to take a knee. Surprised. B.A. told us the other day that uh, they were going to run every kickoff. There's a penalty marker down. <laughs> I wonder if B.A. just said something. You see Jackson, the way he looked for the sideline. Yeah. Run that thing out, I think he wanted to tell him. Well, you know B.A. right now, he doesn't know what to do. Offside. Kicking team, number 80. That five-yard penalty will be tacked on from the 25-yard line. First down and 10 from the 30. Yeah, B.A.'s not calling plays. Harold Goodwin is. 
And B.A.'s out of challenges. Use both of them in the first half. For first game of the Cardinals take on the Broncos, please consider stopping by one of the Be The Match registry tables to place yourself on the National Marrow Donor Registry. A simple cheek swab is the first step to saving a life. For more information, visit BeTheMatch.org. That's the final preseason game. The next two games for the Cardinals are on the road. Preseason game number three will be in Houston. That'll be a nationally televised game, so Wolf and I will be on the radio for that. And then next week, the Cardinals will be in San Diego. In fact, the Cardinals leave Monday. They'll practice with the Chargers Tuesday and Wednesday. And then play San Diego 6 o'clock next Friday night. At Barclays, pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Brandon Jackson. Got a paw up and knocked it to the dirt. You know, four-man rush right there, and he was looking for Ifani Moba running down the seam who lined up in the slot to the right. You can see Rob Crisp giving up way too much ground right there. Got to be a lot more firm and sink that anchor quicker. See the numbers for Barkley tonight. Some of his best throws have been when he's getting drilled. Got a couple of beauties when he's been hit right in the face. Penny with a nice run to the 35 yard line. Greg Townsend on the stop. Well, you wonder with a guy like Elijah Penny, if probably not going to make the 53 when you look at the depth at running back, but maybe the practice squad or maybe a shot with another team. And that's what's great about these preseason games. I know there are a lot of coaches and a lot of fans that would like to see fewer preseason games, but. These are the opportunities that could lead to a roster spot. You only get two chances to play in the preseason. There are a lot of guys that had excellent NFL careers that were undrafted players that may not have if there were only two preseason games. Agree or disagree? What is this? 20 questions? <laughs> well, what's your opinion on this? You were a guy, Wolf, who was a fourth round pick. I think you had six preseason games, didn't you? No, I did not. Yeah, four. Okay. I, my Where goodness, man, you act okay. like I am 75 years old. But how it drives much, me crazy. How much did preseason help you? Because you were a fourth-round pick. You were a fullback. It was no guarantee no, you no. were going to make a roster. No, preseason did not help me in the least. You know what helped me when I came into the league in 1985? I know that's ancient history to you, David. 1985, what helped me was a training camp that lasted for a month, and it was two-a-days, and you hit every day. Blew each other's face off in practice. That helped me. They don't do that anymore. I'd get cut today. If I came into the league, I'd be cut. Ball on the ground, but it's recovered by the Raiders, and that's the end of the third quarter. By the way, thanks for signing your leather helmet that you wore for me <laughs> prior to tonight's game. The fourth quarter is coming up. The Cardinals trail the Raiders 24 to 10 after three. The witching hour on its way. Back here at University of Phoenix Stadium, Jody Jackson here on the sideline, along with starting running back David Johnson. You know, David, last year, 13 touchdowns for you, over 1,600 all-purpose yards. But, of course, last preseason, you were just coming in trying to prove yourself out of northern Iowa. How does it feel, the situation that you're in now, having the year that you had, and now you're the starter? feels great. You know, I'm getting used to more, better used to the, you know, offense, getting used to the atmosphere of the NFL. And, Getting comfortable, you know, getting excited for this upcoming season, being my sophomore year, and, uh, you know, I can't wait. We saw your 23-yard gain there on that first drive. Coach says because you're not thinking as much, you're playing faster. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I'm letting the game come to me, you know, uh, you know, setting up the blocks a, lo a lot better, um, you know, and just being more comfortable in the running the ball and being more comfortable in the pocket, um, being able to, you know, pick out holes a lot easier compared to last year where my head was kind of spinning a little bit. And I think I was trying to do too much last year to try to prove myself. And n now this year, you know, I'm a lot more comfortable. So I think that's what's helping out. All right, I got to ask you about the block on the Floyd catch there. That's an area I know that you're working on. But wow, that was quite a block. Do you feel like you've gotten better in that area? Oh, yeah, I've gotten a lot better. Um, being able to, you know, keep the pocket clean for Carson, um, you know, and just uh, having the leverage, being able to, you know, um, having um, the advantage of knowing how to block the guy and, uh, you know, Getting them in the hole is what one of the biggest things that Stump has told me is to 
um, you know, getting him in the hole so there's less area for him to get around. So I've been getting a, a lot better, but I still feel like I got room to grow. I saw you in the passing game last year, four receiving touchdowns. Do you think we'll see more of that, though, this year? Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm getting uh, very excited this year. I'm getting more um, comfortable running routes, especially with uh, Andre's help and B.A.'s help. So um, hopefully I can even be out split out wide as a receiver even more, um, you know, now that I'm getting more comfortable with the offense. All right, David, real quick for you, all or nothing, you got to see your, your wife, your dog. Oh, what was that like? It was cool. Um, it was very, you know, exciting to let the fans, let my friends see, um, you know, the life of the NFL and then, you know, see our journey, my journny as a rookie and then the journey with uh, Megan and I getting married. Congratulations, David. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Jody. He's a great kid. And you could hear oh. Wolf, him salivating over how Bruce Arians <laughs> is going to use him this year. Yeah. Talking about lining him up in the slot as a wide receiver. I guarantee you they're going to split him out from time to time as well. He's got wide receiver hands. As a matter of fact, David, coming into the into Northern Iowa, he was a wide receiver at first. What a kid. He'll be the number one offensive weapon for the Cardinals in 2016. Twenty four to ten the Raiders lead the Cardinals early fourth quarter your Arizona Ford dealers introduce the all new Ford kick to win sweepstakes for the 2016 Cardinals regular season you could win a brand new 2016 Ford F 150 go to your local Ford dealers .com throughout the preseason for info and registration details. And the Cardinals down two touchdowns take over on their 26 yard line. Matt Barkley starting the fourth quarter at quarterback gets hit as he throws deep and that one is broken off incomplete intended for Chris Huber Barkley's best throws for whatever reason have come when he's either getting drilled or about to I mean that pass was as good as you could ask for in a double coverage oh that was such a great move by Chris Hubert he set himself up he had the all oh, he just couldn't finish now again, the ball thrown a little bit behind him right there. But man, there's an opportunity right there. Chris Hubert has been the talk of training camp as well in regard to undrafted free agents. He's had a great camp, had the opportunity and dropped it. Barkley to the air on second down. Tried to hit Shipley, incomplete, third and ten. Well, you just don't like that thought progress right there, that progression that Matt Barkley was going through throwing that late anytime you throw on the perimeter late it just makes you a little goosey see Harold Goodwin there the offensive coordinator calling plays what a meteoric rise for Harold Goodwin he coached in college for a while got hired as an offensive assistant with Chicago then was the offensive line coach for a brief time in Indianapolis now he's the offensive coordinator here and you know as Barkley throws here in third down incomplete trying to chip it. You know Bruce Arians would not let go of the reins and allow Harold Goodwin to call plays if he didn't think that Goodwin had a chance to be a future head coach. He's a very smart guy. Went to Michigan. Brother played in the NFL for a long time. Jonathan Goodwin. Well it's interesting because Harold Goodwin already interviewed for a head coaching job. Tampa. Tampa Bay and Jason Light the general manager down there right. Had a little sit down with him, and that's good. This is this is what's got to start happening for a Harold Goodwin in order to get more looks as a future head coach. But B.A. wants that coaching tree, David. Of course, if the Cardinals win, everybody benefits. The entire coaching staff returning from 2015. B.A. says that's good in a way, but he'd also like to see some other guys advance in the coaching profession. It was Mike Leach, the former long snapper that once said Troy Nicholas looks like a baby boy that swallowed a bear. He is uh, the subject of tonight's power performance presented by SRP, delivering more than power. Well, you watch him right here. He's not carrying any rattle. Let me tell you that much. He's got a big old club. Oh, you see him right there. Drop the book. Look at this. Watch this. One guy get off me. And here comes the dark heart. North and south. Oh, force with force. Oh, that's how you paint your face metaphorically with a dark heart. Two catches, 44 yards. That was a 32-yard catch and run for Troy Nicholas. Meanwhile, the Raiders had an incompletion on first down. Nicholas had four catches, two touchdowns last year. Former second-round pick. 
battled injury in his two years in the NFL. Bruce Arians told Wolf and I the other day he thinks Nicholas might be their best tight end right now. Here's Cook throwing it out on the flat to Marvin Hall. And Marquis Christian there to greet him at the 43 yard line. Well, look at Troy Nicholas right there, David. You happen to see that band aid he's got on there? I guarantee he didn't cut himself shaving. All right, because he don't shave. I don't think he'd be shaving. That little band aid right there. Oh, watch this. Here comes Marquis. Oh, Blood Farmer. Marquis Christian taking the buckles, trying to put it right on the ball. Nothing like a little blood farming to get you fired up for the blood sport. Third and three. Cook has a completion and a first down into Cardinal territory to Ryan O'Malley. Matthias Farley on the tackle. And Connor Cook, you know, he's, he was in college at Michigan State. Very good at operating an offense. The knock on him was because he wasn't a captain as a senior was that he wasn't a great leader. So he started to slide. Everybody had question marks about him. He's a little different has a different personality and that turned off a lot of people and that's why he went from maybe a first round talent to a fourth round pick different like how like Jay Cutler different or I wouldn't say to that extent because you know Cutler his personality is different cook is a guy who likes to joke around kind of goofy even when you sit and talk with him in the production meetings I don't like goofy out of my quarterback I'm just saying well you know a lot, a lot honestly, of personnel people agreed with you yeah there, there's a lot of times believe me uh, there are two times where your head will snap up in a huddle number one when a legendary quarterback walks into that huddle, a guy that is greatly respected your head will snap and you'll look right at that cue in the huddle the other time is when the goofy backup comes in then you snap your head because you're looking to see dude are you gonna be all right are you gonna make it here's Atkins in between the tackles got maybe a yard brought down by Rodney Gunter who's getting a lot of time and just played a lot in this game and an injured Cardinal here the swamp thing Rodney Gunter has played so well Haines City Florida think about this a second year guy David a guy that can play all the way across the board the one technique over the center three technique at the guard five technique as a defensive end can play all the way across the board don't all the way from Haines City Florida Rodney Gunter rookie linebacker Lamar Lewis out of LSU shaken up on the previous play he was down for a while but then walked under his own power to the Cardinal bench Meanwhile, the Raiders in front, 24 to 10, have a third and four at the Cardinal 42. Connor Cook, rookie from Michigan State, in a quarterback for Oakland. And they're going to run Atkinson, and Shaq Riddick is there, along with Opalo Lugo and Butler. Good job by the Cardinal linebackers to get Atkinson to the ground and force a punt. Boy, that is a great job by Shaq Riddick. The kid from West by God, Virginia. You want to talk about setting the edge right there. That's how you do it. What do you think the chances are of Riddick making the team? It's going to be tough, David. It really is. You think they're going to keep four? Well, you know Marcus Golden is here. and I think this Chandler Jones guy has got a chance as well. Behind them, you got Kareem Martin. He's had a pretty good training camp. And then you got Alex Okafor. It's going to be tough. And the punt sails out of bounds. They will mark it at the 12 yard line. We'll see who the quarterback is for the Cardinals. When we come back. Lead the Cardinals 24 to 10. Jody Jackson here on the sidelines with Chandler Jones coming over. 12 and a half sacks last year, 36 sacks since entering the league in 2012 you know coming over from the Patriots now is it true you actually called Bill Belichick and said thank you for trading me to a contender and, and why is this team a good fit for you yeah you know I did call coach Belichick and I told him that which is it was a pretty funny story but this is a great team you know they run the ball well and they throw the ball well and I've always been a, a fan of the Cardinals so I'm glad to be here for sure a pass rush was one thing the team was looking for uh, I noticed at camp you're with Calais Campbell a lot I mean what kind of bond have you already forged with some of these guys 
You know, our chemistry that we have is so great already. I mean, there's some times in practice I'll just look at him and give him a head nod, and he'll know what I'm going to do, and vice versa. So uh, I'm excited to see what we do this season for sure. Definitely me and Calais. About James Vetcher and the aggressive nature of this defense, that fits your style, does it? For sure. You know what? My, my uh, defensive coordinator before, he didn't blitz as much. And, uh, you know, James has a, a very – he's known for blitzing, and that's good for a pass rusher because you can't be double teamed. So I'm excited about that for sure. And Chandler, you know, I mentioned kind of you guys already getting together and creating chemistry. Um, did you kind of create a trip to L.A. right before training camp? Was that your idea? Yeah, you know, I called all the outside linebackers, and uh, I put them in a group sex, actually. And I said, hey, we're all going to L.A. You guys can fly with me or we can meet out there. And we all met out at a hotel. We just – we had a week just to get our, lay our hair down before we got, you know, serious in the business. And it was, it was a success for sure. Chandler, then finally just kind of getting out there. I know you weren't out there a long time, but what did it feel like getting back out there? It felt great, honestly. It was, it was a great feeling to come out here. You know, the last time I actually played out here was during that Super Bowl we played out here. But, uh, you know, Patrick Peterson and Larry Fitzgerald, they both gave me a big hug and said, we're glad to have you, and uh, let's get the show on the road. Welcome. Thanks so much for your time. I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Chandler Jones, guys. Yeah, former first-round pick. Out of Syracuse, where one Craig Wolfley also played. There's a lot, uh, six degrees of Chandler Jones with the Wolfley family as Coker is in a quarterback throws complete right of the first down marker. You both played for Bill Belichick. He played for Belichick when he coached the Browns. Now, many of our viewers aren't old enough to remember when Bill Belichick coached yes. the Browns. But 92 uh, 93, Jones. it's in the books, David. Your thoughts on what you've seen from Jones in practice? Man, I'll tell you what, I absolutely love this guy because he's a complete football player. Yes, he is a very good edge rusher. Yes, he's a great athlete. Yes, he's got some, some nice technique, and he's got three really, really good moves that he brings off the edge. But what he is, is a football player. He's a guy that you never take off the field. He sets the edge as well as anybody in the league. He plays against the run. He cares about playing against the run. You don't get a lot of edge guys, David, that really think that way. Chandler Jones is a complete football player. It's going to be a great addition to what James Betcher does. But I do believe it's going to challenge the philosophy of James Betcher and Bruce Arians for that matter, I might add. Right. You, you, Nobody you don't need to blitz. What, exact, how much do you blitz? Well, first of all, David, I think you, you have to have that in your arsenal. If you want to go deep into the playoffs where you start... Cornell will land downfield, kicking team number 80. That five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. Timeout. Where you start facing elite quarterbacks, you've got to have the ability to rush four and drop seven. Chandler Jones will give you that ability. Along with the addition of Robert Kimdichi through the draft and Marcus Golden, second year out of Missouri, the Cardinals pass rush much improved, we expect, in 2016. Midway through the fourth, the Raiders on top of Arizona, 24-10, as we welcome you back to our Ford broadcast booth, brought to you by your Arizona Ford dealers, Dave Pash, Ron Wolfley up in the booth, Jody Jackson down on the field. It's amazing to watch Twitter blow up, Wolf, when uh, these games are broadcast not only locally, but on NFL Network when you're calling a game. Oh. You're very polarizing, Wolf. Well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Why don't you just kick me in the cradle? You love Twitter. Come on. Connor Cook. Oh, boy. Wide open is Brent. As uh, the Cardinals had a mix up there, it appeared. Maurice Christian on the tackle. There is a penalty marker down, though. Yeah, it looks like it's coming back here. Pass interference. Offense, number 80. That's a 10-yard penalty replay. First down. So that's how Brent got so open. <laughs> <laughs> and the gates a 28-yard pass play. Well, here you go right here. Yeah, a little one-on-one -on -one coverage, man cover. Boy, that was. That didn't look like much. What, what happened there? Honestly. Preseason for the officials, too. My goodness. That, uh, that was ticky-tack like taffy ticky-tack. K.J. Brent bad. agrees with you. So it's second and 20 at the Raider 29. Check that first and 20. The sticks have it right. They say first down the scoreboard here. The University of Phoenix Stadium has it as second and 20. As Cook just throws it in the dirt trying to set up the screen to Atkinson. Opala Lugo was in the backfield. Blew that play up. How about that? Opala Lugo coming down with some energy and some speed. Here's a guy I really like his body type as well. If you look at him, David, he's, he's bull-legged, right? Yet he's got these long arms. You can see why he was as effective in the CFL 
as he wants. Just look at his body type. 23 sacks the last two years in the CFL. Hoping to make the NFL. People look at you, they know you're a play-by-play -play guy, David. They look at Apollo Lago, and they know. Apollo this is an, <laughs> All this is an edge play. Offense, the center. Five-year penalty, second down. Now, that, that's a point of emphasis. I, I, I think the center, if you move the ball now, when everybody's set and you move it, in, even if it's unintentional, they're going to call that now. You can't move the football as the center like you used to because they think you're trying to cheat and draw the defender offside even though really most of the time the defender doesn't budge. Here's Cook. And that pass is caught. Nathan Palmer. The 34 yard line gain of about 10. You know one thing we didn't mention tonight. There, there are a lot of Cardinal fans that would love to thank the Raiders. And send every Raider fan Flowers. Was that David? Jared Valdir and Carson Palmer. <laughs> Palmer was traded by the Raiders for a sixth round pick. There were many that thought that Carson Palmer could not be a franchise quarterback. Steve Kime thought otherwise. Bruce Arians was on board as well, and here we are. I didn't want to bring that up to my friend Reggie against the general manager. I thought it would be in bad form if I actually said, hey, thanks for Carson Palmer and Jared Valdir for not transition time. We appreciate that. Back in 2013, the Cardinals had hired Bruce Arians as the head coach. They were trying to figure out who the, the, the quarterback was going to be. Things didn't work out with uh, the previous group that tried to replace Kurt Warner. Yep. Chris Hubert is deep. Marquette King on the punt again. Marquette King reminds me of Andy Lee. Remember when every ever oh, Andy man. Lee punted, he just drove you crazy because he killed it every time, which King does here. I mean, look at this. Hubert back at his eight-yard line. That was like 65 yards in the air. There was a line. There was like no hang time on that either. No doubt about it. You know, going back to Jared Valdir, you think of how Jared Valdir. When he was acquired here, the way he settled down Bruce Arians' offense. Do you remember that, David? Yeah. Bruce Arians had to call every play through the prism of the left tackle and whether or not the left tackle at the time would actually hold up. Do you know how difficult that is as a play caller to do? Where you've got to say, man, I'd really like to take this shot here, but I don't think our left tackle is going to be able to hold up. Now we're going to have to keep a tight end in to help him or chip him with a back, right? Chip the back on the way out. Suddenly the windows get smaller when you're trying to throw the ball down the field. Here's Kerwin Williams throw a gap and he's up end of it didn't go down. Put his hand down. Picks up the first down of the 32 a 13 yard run for Kerwin Williams. But you go back to to Veltier and Carson Palmer were teammates in Oakland for a short time. Remember Carson was only there for a couple of years and you know, Palmer came to the Cardinals people forget that in 2012 Carson threw for over 4,000 yards as the quarterback of the Raiders. Yes. Yeah again you know what you've got to have nowadays you got to have three things offensively if you want to be able to use all your talent. Number one you got to have a cue. Number two you got to have a left tackle and there are more and more people coming around right now saying number three on the offensive side of the ball you got to have a right tackle you got to have two tackles that can hold up one of the reasons why they're flopping pass rushers more and more and more trying to get that matchup on what they perceive to be the weak tackle that's a good throw by Jacob Coker whose last time on a football field was right here University of Phoenix Stadium quarterbacking Alabama to a national championship win over Clemson seven months ago he's the number four quarterback right now for the Cardinals trying to make a roster spot and he almost was a pick knocked down by McDonald a Coker who couldn't beat out Blake Sims at Alabama two years ago given the job by Nick Saban last year and he played very well in the college football playoff national championship game. Well you love that little sprint pass right there Jake Coker 
Standing tall in the pocket. Now you're going to throw the deep out. Great read. There's been a lot of guys that have played very, very well at the college level, though, that have struggled at the pro level for whatever reason. Coker started out at Florida State. He was Jameis Winston's backup and uh, knew that he wasn't going to get, get on the field as long as Winston was there. So he transferred to Alabama, as mentioned. He couldn't beat out Blake Sims two years ago. Sims led Alabama to the college football playoff. They lost to Ohio State. Coker got him one step further last year, winning the national title. Again, tough to make this roster. You know, number one and number two, Palmer and Stanton, and then likely either Matt Barkley or nobody as the, the number three. Certainly a possibility the Cardinals stick with just the two quarterback. Hey, this is film. This is video for Jay Coker right now. Overthrows Jackson Shipley. And not just, you know, if the Cardinals decide that uh, they wanted to put him on the practice squad, assuming he clears waivers, but there's other teams who obviously will watch all the film. Coker is going to play a lot because we know Carson's not going to play a lot in the preseason and neither will Stanton. So you're going to see a lot of Barkley and Coker mm -hmm. over the next three games. Cardinals are going to go for it here on fourth and five. Boy, just look at that Carson Palmer there, Larry Fitzgerald. You saw big Jared Valdir standing behind him. Valdir has just had a great training camp. Solid as a rock. Here's Coker flushed out of the pocket and he gets ripped down. Sacked back at the 44-yard line as the Cardinals turn it over on downs. Drew Iddings was there for the Raiders. Well, while we have uh, an opportunity here on the change of possession, I want to remember two men who were born on the same day, February 17th. Buddy Ryan in 1931, Dennis Green in 1949, and both passed away this summer. Denny, the coach for the Cardinals from 2004 to 2006. Buddy coached the Cardinals in 1994 and 1995. Both had tremendous success as assistant coaches and also a lot of success as head coaches with uh, Denny in Minnesota, reaching the NFC Championship game twice, and Buddy in Philadelphia leading the Eagles to the playoffs three times. As Atkinson is tackled at the 35-yard line. You and I both got to know Denny very well, and I know you knew Buddy. Uh, from your time in the NFL, Denny Green had a big impact on this organization. He didn't get to see the wins, but he was part of the draft process in 2004 that saw Larry Fitzgerald, Darnell Dock, and Carlos Dansby, Antonio Smith become Cardinals. And David, Kurt Warner become a Cardinal as well as a Yeah, agent. absolutely. And, you know, you go back to Larry Fitzgerald being drafted number three over, overall. I, I will tell you right now, David, remember back because there were eyebrows that were raised about him being drafted and suddenly oh you know what do you know him you know his dad that's why you drafted him. Atkinson inside the 10 Atkinson to the end zone touchdown Raiders but to your point on Fitzgerald remember that was the same draft that produced Philip Rivers and Ben Roethlisberger who were drafted after Larry Fitzgerald but the Cardinals took Fitz and he's the best draft pick in Arizona Cardinals history. Yes, indeed. Meanwhile, George Atkinson has rushed for 97 yards on five carries and has two touchdowns. You also think back to that draft right there in 2004. Antonio Smith. Don't know if you mentioned him. Yeah, I did. Yep. Or, oh, did you? Okay. Right, don't. Antonio Smith in the fifth round. What a great player. He has been in what a great career he's had in the league. And after the, the news of Denny's passing, you saw a tremendous outreach. Uh, people just wanting to share stories of how Green impacted their lives. People that went back all the way to Northwestern with Dennis Green. Uh, even to Stanford, his time there with Bill Walsh. Now, Tom Moore, you and I were talking to, to Tom Moore the other day, and you know, Tom, uh, who you see there in the glasses uh, next to Jake Coker to, to the left of Jake Coker. Uh, he was on that Minnesota staff for a while with, with Coach Green. And obviously the Fitzgerald Moore. family, including Larry Sr., go way back with, uh, with Denny. Well, it's always tough, too, when 
somebody like Dennis Green and his passing, that it happened so abruptly. You know, it's always tough when you get news like that. Larry Fitzgerald and his family, very, very close, as you said, with Dennis Green. And, you know, Larry went through a very difficult time right there when Dennis Green passed away, as so many of his players did. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Dennis Green always had the reputation of being a player's coach. A lot of guys love Dennis Green. And we heard from all those guys when he did pass. Jackson Shipley is deep. Cardinals down 31-10 here late in the fourth quarter. Speaking of Larry Fitzgerald, everybody wants to see if he can do it again at age 32 in his 13th season. He is two touchdown receptions shy of 100. Coming off a, a record setting season with 109 catches. As Shipley is out to the 30 yard line. Fitz signing a one year extension told me the other day that he expects to uh, finish his career as a Cardinal as long as they want to have him. The Japanese fighting fish. Yeah, he, he doesn't like that when you he does that. No. no, he does not like it whatsoever. But you know what? Google it. You want to look at a Japanese fighting fish? We did Google it. And you showed That's him it, a, and he still I, didn't I, like it. it. You're going to tell me it didn't look like Fitz. Uh, Are you kidding me? And not only that, a Japanese fighting fish, deadly and single-minded of purpose. Have you ever seen this guy in the red zone? Give him the pig. Because that's going across the stripe. Well, that, that's why I thought you called him that. I didn't realize you actually thought he looked like a, a, a Japanese fighting fish. I remember the movie that The Naked Gun. And that's the last <laughs> I saw the Japanese fighting fish. Experience the new contour from Fox. Experience cable TV redefined. Visit cox.com slash contour for details. Japanese fighting fish. Very territorial. <laughs> Deadly and single-minded of purpose. One of the most vicious killers in the sea. How about Larry in that playoff game here against Green Bay? Uh, the winning touchdown in overtime. The long catch and run to set up the touchdown. He had almost 200 receiving yards that day. Just something about the playoffs brings out the best in Larry Fitzgerald. Cardinals run the ball here. They're just trying to run it out and get this game over with. Oh my. Boy, it is just great news for the organization, the fan base that Larry is coming back. What a what a player. What a guy. I mean, just the face of the organization as it stands right now. And the Cardinals are happy to have him. There was a time where that seemed uncertain a couple of years ago as Penny gets to the 40 yard line. There were so many that thought. Uh, Fitz has peaked. It's over. He, he can't do it at the level that he once did. And then last year he goes for 1,200 yards, 109 catches, nine touchdowns, and absolutely shine in the playoffs. 31-10. We're at the two-minute warning here at University of Phoenix Stadium. We've got just rep after rep after rep with each other, and, and that's uh, one of the most important things you can have because. It just develops your chemistry and your rhythm and timing, and um, you you combine the rhythm and timing that we have with the athletes we have, and it's it's a very potent system. Join us Carson Palmer, who told us during that interview, he, he's never had more offensive weapons than he does right now. And you know, we talk about some of the question marks on the offensive line. He actually said, quoting him, "I'm licking my chops." with my offensive line. He really likes D.J. Humphreys. You know, at the beginning of camp, people, it depended on who you talked to about the progress of Humphreys, but he's really come on here lately, and, and Palmer was all over in that interview about D.J. Yeah, I know DJ. we'll go back and watch the film tonight to get a real, uh, to get a good sense of how Humphreys played in almost a, a quarter and a half of work. Sure. You know, again, look, D.J. Humphreys, it's going to be so critical that he develops. Uh, I do believe right now the Arizona Cardinals, you can't go into a Super Bowl season. You can't go into this season saying, you know what, we got a question mark at right tackle. And uh, we'll, we'll just throw them out there and see what happens. You've got to have some type of insurance policy as well. 
You don't want to saw the confidence of DJ Humphreys off at the knees. You don't want to do that. But you also have to make a plan in case he doesn't pan out. And if that's the case, that means you want a pro. Somebody remember when Eric Winston, when Steve Kime went ahead and signed Eric Winston two days, I believe, before training camp opened or the day before. And he showed up, and in three days, David, he was your starting right tackle. Remember yeah, I remember that? that. Yep. Uh, I, I could see another situation like that happening if, in fact, D.J. Humphreys does not develop. But I'll tell you what, this kid right here, D.J. Humphreys, he has developed more year to year than any player that I've seen for the Cardinals. Hey, last year, the effort wasn't there. The intensity wasn't there. He looked like he was just out there slapping it around. Mm -hmm. Not he any more. Yeah. He was immature. He cares. Nobody brings the intensity to practice during training camp like D.J. Humphreys. Well, there's no doubt this offense headed for big things. Number one last year in yards and time of possession. Number two in scoring. Number two in touchdowns with 59. And they got everybody back. Every single yard and, and point accounted for returns in 2016. It uh, wasn't a great offensive performance tonight, but again, don't want to read too much into it. Just preseason, not showing a whole lot. And, of course, the first-team offense was out there for about two minutes. 31-10, the Raiders beat the Cardinals in the preseason opener. Well, there's something to build on, and that's something's called video. They got film footage of these young guys, and now the coaches can really, really teach. You got game film to look at. You had the silks on. You weren't working against guys that you've seen since really March. <laughs> now all of a sudden you're working against people you haven't worked against, don't know their offense very well, didn't do a lot of game planning. A lot of room to grow here. All right, 31-10 the final score. We'll come back and wrap things up from University of Phoenix Stadium after this.